Okay, chat. Let's see. Where did we end off yesterday? On pre-pending, right? So we need to plumb in pre-pending support for all the other root types we have. Why the fuck are these saying unknown though? That's a bit weird. Hmm. Can we do something like that? Type it to string? Nope. Can't do that, mate. Can we do that? Prepend type is unknown. The fuck, hey? I don't think we're going to get rid of these warnings. I don't understand how it can be unknown though. Maybe. Dict SDR any. Maybe it's the any that's the problem. Yes, so um, but why doesn't this one have the same problem oh you see why hey are all of these dictionaries I think it's because we have a if is instance here. <laughs> oh my dear Jesus. So we have if one and it removes the unknowns from these two. That's pretty fucked up. But if you got an if instance or an if is is instance dict. It says that they're unknown. That is curious, but anyway, fuck that shit. Um, kernel default static default originated black hole. Uh, actually. We don't have originated black hole roots, this would be originated default. Um, BGP own black hole, BGP own default. Alright, customer, BGP customer black hole, BGP transit default. Uh, that just basically sets the, the dictionary we're creating and passes it to bird plan. It's just validating our configuration file. LOL! Oxgrave Forest, LOL! Can we blame Firefox for that, mate? Oh, we also, okay, so the reason we have a is instance here is because this would be a fucking direct assignment of a list. Ah, oh, okay. Well, I mean, kind of sucks that these are going to be read for the rest of their lives, but... Not much we can do about that at the moment. I don't know how to fix that. Uh, no, I just sort of saw over here that these are complaining that they're unknown. But if we change this to a one, 
it stops complaining that it's unknown, which is pretty curious, but not much we can do about that. Those will just have to stay pylons warnings for now. Not much we can do about it. I don't know how to fix this. It'll probably take an hour or two for me to figure it out, which is a bit too long. So fuck it. Fuck it. Okay. Um, so those are the configuration options we have. We did update our documentation with that. Yes, we did. Kernel black hole default, static black hole, static default, originated default, BGP black hole, BGP owned black hole, BGP owned default, customer black hole, hearing transit and transit default. Okay, so that should mean we can probably use those configuration options now. And the first thing we are probably going to do... Oh, fuck. Um, we've got some special shit that needs to happen here, mate. Special shit. We need to check the defaults. Uh, how did, oh my dear Jesus. We, we aren't on to large communities yet, are we? No, we're not. So we just can ignore that bit for now. Let's just ignore that top half. Don't quite know what's going on there. But for this one over here, we probably need to copy something like this. This is how we set our defaults. Um, I wonder, shouldn't we also have an option for BGP? Oh, we do have an option for BGP. Never mind. I think then we can just copy this block. That's pre. Oh shit, fuck. I pressed the wrong button there. What the fuck have I done now? What the fuck? Where was that? And what the fuck did I just do? What the fuck did I just do, mate? I have got no idea, but let's grab that block again. Um, so, th I think we just need this. Sort of. Sort of just need something like that. And we need to put that. Where's our prepending? Where the fuck are you? Pre oh, here we go. Oh, my dear Jesus. This is going to be a nightmare. Okay, so we need to set defaults here. Uh. Um, the problem is, how is our prepending actually working at the moment? Um, well, that's a good question. That is a very good question. Um, what the fuck? What the fuck? What the hell does this own ASN even mean? Oh, okay, that is how many times to prepend. 
Okay, so um, this is to prepend our, prepend our own ASN. So in future, we'll be able to add like prepending the client's ASN as well. We're not doing that now. We're just prepending our own ASN. So we've got default, which we should probably remove. Oh shit, we don't actually have the other options I thought we had. Oh shit. Um, we probably need to remove default on ASN then. Um, well, that's definitely not ideal. Um, prepend item. Here we go. Is this prepending? Yes, this is prepending. So we are going to remove the default. I mean, we could have it there. I don't know. I don't know, man. Let's put kernel default. Um, originated default. Static default. Um, we got BGP, BGP. Oh my god! Here's where our properties blow up. Own black hole, BGP own black hole root prepending options, and copy that. Own default PGP own default root prepending customer. This will be black hole. Um, be customer black hole root prepending and transit. Yeah, transit default. options and we need to then add it over here um, kernel default originated default static default um, BGP we have okay own default um, we could have just a default here I suppose I don't know what do our tests have we have a default here already being tested but we don't have a default for anything else if we check our outgoing large communities we don't have a single default option okay um, fuck default it has to be explicitly specified I suppose we could always add that in the future though customer black hole um, transit default Um, defaults being removed from here. Kernel. Oh shit. Kernel. Default. Static. Default. Um. BGP own black hole BG 
PGP and default customer black hole and transit default. Okay, so we should have the options now that we need or the attributes that we need. And this one should then show errors where we have problems. We can probably remove that then. Um, so under connected, oh my dear Jesus, we're going to need a lot more bird functions for this. We got, uh, we don't have any connected default routes or anything, so that's fine. Um, we do have kernel default over here. Those functions we need to sort out, or at least that one. And we do have a kernel, okay, we got a kernel black hole, kernel default root, originated. We then have originated default. God, that line's too long now. What the fuck? Well, that's definitely not ideal because that's a function. Oh my god. How long is this line? Yeah, it's fine. Can we just say this is equal to this one? That's going to get split up. And then we can just put this over here. Not ideal, but looks a little bit better. Um, static black hole, we need static default. own we've got a BGP BGP own we can add in BGP own black hole and that line's probably also too fucking long sake of making this entire line length just shove you in there mate okay own black hole own default Jesus Default. And default. And default. Default. And default. Okay. And then customer own. Or BGP customer, we then need BGP customer black hole, BGP customer black hole, customer black hole, and 
seeing as that line is also too fucking long now. Let's create a variable there. Right. Okay. Transit. The transit default. Which is also too long. Well, fuck. Ah, it's a sign you to that. Instead of this being on so many lines, we can actually move this to one line. We'll probably do the same over here. And we can probably... Okay, the others are still fine. Okay, so we have got... A fucking mess, that's what we got here. Connected we've got. Kernel we've got. Kernel black hole we've got. Kernel default we've got. What the fuck is this music anyway? I don't know. But it's not DMCA. Okay. Originated. Wait, we've got kernel default. Originated. Originated default. Static, static black hole, static default. Right. GP own. Oh, we got BGP, we got BGP on, we got BGP on black hole, we got BGP on default. Yeah, man, he should turn up the sound. Gangster rap. Um, let's do a format document again. This really looks fucked up, but uh, there's not much more we can do. Black has sorted it out, so... We're just gonna have to accept how it is, I guess. Now we need to implement these fucking be um, uh, bird functions. So I think we go to where this one is and we just change black hole to default. It'll be the easiest, so we copy this bird function. And we change black hole. Did he just say he came in a fucking toaster? What the fuck? Yeah, don't even try to make sense of it. I guess that's a good idea. Could have sworn he though said he came in a toaster, but <laughs> I don't know what the point of that would have been, but okay. Okay, so all we do here is we swap. Um, if it isn't a kernel root, then we return false. If it isn't a default root, we return false. And if it is a black hole, we return false. So you can't um, have a default black hole root. <laughs> Black holding all your traffic is probably a bad idea. So, 
That will be kernel default. The prepend count. Okay, that's one function done. So if we just get this thing to update, that's one. Okay. Next one is originated. Um originated is excluding the default route. Can we just make these functions look all the same? So it's easier to see what the fuck's going on here. There's a couple more lines of code, but I don't fucking care. So now they're all pretty much the same, right? So originated default, we can then copy originated. Call this originated default. Originated default. And if it isn't originated return, and if it isn't default return, okay. And this will probably be originate default. How long is that line? 133. Jesus fucking Christ, it has to be too long, doesn't it? 24. Let's move this onto this line. Okay. This is not originate, this is originated. So that's originated default routes. That should be done now, right? Okay, next function we need to implement is static default. So we can just copy static black hole. We've got too many bird functions, chat. But I must say, they are only used if they are needed. So, I mean, it's not too bad, right? static black hole with static default and let's switch this around to if it isn't static return false if it isn't default return false and if it is black hole return false so that's gonna only only match static default routes in and continue down to get prepended Okay, so that's that one sorted. What is next? Um, own and own black hole. Oh, that's going to be interesting. So now if we set... Okay, so we actually have to change how this works then. Because we want to... Um, instead of how it works now, where own will basically prepend everything, we rather want it to work where own is an option up top here that sets the defaults for all the own shit. Then you can override it and say, I don't want own black hole or own default to be prepended. We just specify a zero, I believe. Do we even support a zero? 
That's a good fucking question. I think we do. Um, okay. Ah, oh, shit. So... This is going to be slightly different then. Oh, we don't have... We do have a BGP option. Fuck me. Oh, where is that option? Wait, where's the... Large communities... Okay, so... Large communities has the option. Prepending. We're removing the default route from prepending. I mean... I suppose we could have the default root there. It's just going to set the defaults for all the default routes, right? It's not that hard for us to implement that. We add it back. Default root prepending options. We're going to put it first. Well, it probably should be second, right? And all that's going to do is just set the default options. Which can then obviously be overridden for each of them. Okay. And default over here. We're not actually going to do anything with that apart from do configuration. Depending default over here okay and then back to um, over here um, where we're gonna probably start with default check if we're Depending default routes. If default in peer config prepend and Default in peer config prepend. Are those integers by default? Yeah, they are integers. Oh shit. Anyway, if default in peer config prepend, then self dot. Oh my god, what is that fucking option even called? Damn it, click the wrong screen. Self dot prepend dot whatever. Self dot prepend dot kernel default. This is going to be a bit of a fuck up. Um, <laughs> Because each of these lines is going to be fucking long as shit. So it would be probably easier if we did it like this. Uh, 
We've got own ASN. I think we only accept own ASN at the moment here. Yeah, set prepend count. Set pre prepend attribute. Oh, Jesus. Own ASN and prepend count. Okay, so that would then be self.prepend.kernel default. own asn equals option static default equals option um transit default Is that throwing an error? BGP transit, okay, never mind. Originator default. And then self.prepend dot BGP um, own default dot own Transit default. Okay, so that sets the default for all of them. Why is this throwing an area here? Undefined. Okay, don't worry. Um, it's one, two, three, four, five. Jesus Christ, it's five default options. We've got one, two. Three, four, five. Okay, perfect. Give me a second, chat. I just got a notification here of something that's notifying me of shit. Let's quickly see what's going on here. Okay, I'm gonna need, uh, I actually have half a glass of coffee. Okay, so next, what we have, give me just one second. Um, oh, hi man, just cut up what you developing. Um, project details over there, mate. Say bird internet routing team and configuration tool. Um, that means that we don't have an actual default option over here then. Actually, we don't have a default option on this. It's just set from the configuration. So I was correct to remove it. Okay. Um, what is the next options that we have? Where's our readme gone? Um, what other things cover everything? Um, BGP will match all BGP routes. So BGP needs to then set the defaults for everything, right? And that's what our documentation says. It doesn't say it excludes anything. So BGP should be next. So we can just copy default in. Oh, BGP roots. And that then is going to be BGP customer. Um, but hang on, doesn't that mean that BGP customer is then also like a um No. Ignore me. BGP customer, um BGP customer black hole. Um it's going to set Now what happens if BGP customer is set?
I don't think we need to worry about that just yet. BGP owned. Own black hole. Own default. BGP peering. BGP transit. This is going to also set the default. Yeah, it's going to set the default as well. And transit default. Okay. Oh shit, but that. Yeah, that's BGP, not fucking default. So if we are prepending all BGP routes, we are pulling in customer, customer black hole, own, own default. Or oh, own black hole, own default, peering, transit, and transit defaults. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we can probably remove BGP from here as well. So that just sets the defaults for all of them. I think we can do it that way. I'm not sure what our other things say about that will match all BGP routes that's for outgoing large communities have we done that yet yes we have shit let's just quickly check how that's implemented and make sure we are outgoing large communities man somewhere filtering redistribution outgoing large communities oh fuck me with a frying pan chat it's not setting any defaults or anything for outgoing large communities That's not ideal. It should pretty much be exactly the same as what we're doing at the moment. Which should match the redistribution sort of. The redistribution is slightly different though. Yeah, redistribution is different. But outgoing large communities and prepending should be the same. Should be pretty much the same implementation of the options and shit. So what we probably then need to do is fix outgoing large communities as well. Um I swap T60 and T62 around? No, I didn't. Outgoing large communities should match the logic in prepend update docs. Okay. Default will set the default value for all star underscore default options.
BGP will set the default value for all BGP underscore star options. Right? BGP customer underscore star options. BGP earn. Set the default for all BGP earn underscore. Okay. So we'll also set the default. So if you then say something like BGP, you set a prepend, it's going to prepend everything, right? If you say own set to prepend, it's going to prepend everything. If you say, but the thing is, is that default is then going to override. If you go default and then own, own will override the default for own, but I suppose that that's fine. I suppose that that's fine. I don't see too much of a problem with that. Okay, we'll match BGP roots that originate from IS and this will also set the default options for BGP and star options. Customer will set it for customer star options. This will set the default for All BGP underscore transit underscore stop options. Um, hang on a second. This does not make too much sense then. Kernel, however. So if it's a BGP root, we've got BGP equals whatever, five, so um, five or so, right? It'll prepend everything, everything BGP. If we say BGP own equals five, it'll prepend own, own black hole, own default. We can then override own default. For instance, and say zero, which means BGP own and black hole would then get prepended. But in terms of the kernel root, static roots, and originated, it doesn't match the other roots. I don't think that that should be the case. I think it should default all of them. So kernel should default, kernel black hole, kernel default. At least for prepending and outgoing large communities. I mean, redistribution is a completely different thing. So I really think that this should be defaulting shit here. So also set the default for all kernel underscore options. And this one all static. Because it's more likely than never that you would want to set it for a type of root, like either PGP or originated or static you wouldn't normally set it for like black hole or default okay god i'm yawning so fucking many times here okay kernel is going to be originated 
Um, okay, so we got default at the moment. Um, we've got kernel. Now we probably need Oh, we got defaults and we got PGP. We can now probably start with like kernel or something. Maybe we can then delete these. And we can just copy one of these. So. Can Connected, we're not going to do anything about that. Kernel. So kernel is going to set kernel black hole and kernel default. Right. BGP kernel black hole kernel default. Ah, oh, it's not BGP kernel, it's just plain kernel. Um, hey there, Maclo, how's it going, mate? Thanks a lot for the follow, man, it's greatly appreciated. Thanks, man. Um, hey there, J Jeremy Roll, how's it going, mate? Thanks a lot for the follow, man, Gre greatly appreciated. Thanks, man. Maclo, hello, brother, I'm new to Python, any recommendations? Where should I practice? How should I learn? Give me a moment. My sort of best recommendation would be the Python documentation over here in terms of learning Python. Um, and then my second recommendation would be Python coding challenges, which there are a few sites that you can find over here. That might be a more fun way of doing things. Okay. Um, so this will be a check if we are prepending all kernel roots. So that's going to set the default for kernel black hole and kernel default, right? Next, static is going to be pretty much exactly the same. Cool beans, mate. Kernel changing to static. Okay. Check if we're prepending all static routes. If static and peer config prepend, option equals peer, con peer config prepend static. Static black hole equals option. Static default. Oh no, it's equals option. Okay, static. Static. Next is originated, and originated just sets the originated default route. Static originated Just keep that in the same format that we have and next would be BGP own um, BGP is obviously going to override their own setting, isn't it? No, it actually won't. It actually won't. It sets it over here. So if we then have a more specific one like um, BGP own or so, that should be fine. That should be fine. So if BGP own and peer config, we're just going to set Um, ah, shit. 
What about these options below then? I think it's fine. I think it's fine. So BGP own and that's just going to set own black hole and own default. Okay. And then we need Oh shit, we didn't do customer. Jesus. PGP customer. Hmm. It is called BGP customer, right? Yeah, customer just sets black hole. Okay. Originated sets originated default. BGP customer sets BGP customer black hole. BGP own sets BGP own black hole or BGP own default. And then BGP transit. Transit. It's BGP transit default, right? Is that right then? I think so. And now the overrides for that. We are not pulling in default. Default's done above. We are. Um, we do pull in kernel, we do pull in kernel black hole, we probably need to pull in kernel default. We do need to pull in static, we do need to pull in static black hole, we do need to pull in static default. We do need to pull in originated. Originated default. We do need to pull in BGP. No, we don't pull in BGP. Oh, we do pull in BGP. So, what is the difference in between BGP and everything else? That doesn't make sense. We don't need a BGP option then. It just sets a default for everything. So we can actually remove this. Because the roots can either be own, customer, peering, transit. There can't be anything else, right? They can't come from nowhere. So if BGP is set, it just sets all the BGP options in, which means it probably needs to set customer. Oh, we do have that being set. Customer, customer, black hole, own, own black hole, and default, peering, transfer, transfer, default. So it does set all of them. Okay. So then that can be disabled if we need to. Okay, so the next thing is originated and originated default we can then remove bgp here and go bgp own bgp own black hole bgp own default customer customer black hole <laughs> 
most important part of program is to know how to research if you know how to research for your problem you already won half the battle well i mean the python documentation is pretty pretty complete piece of information for that right um transit default um if you know uh unless you're doing what this guy is doing then you're on your own <laughs> yeah man i'm on my own here um okay so this is going to be a bit of a problem we've got some options that we are ignoring here such as default in BGP Then what do we have? We can remove this then, right? No, we can't, can we? That would have to set everything. Absolutely everything. Well, that's not ideal. It would have been it would be better if um Well, that is a bit of a problem then. That needs to pretty much set everything. every option we have it needs to set it not ideal it's at the end it's at the motherfucking end mates i mean i mean could just copy everything. We could just copy everything. It's a possibility. Where's my sorty thing gone? Oops. Okay. Um, customer black hole, customer. Why does it sort customer off the fucking customer black hole? Okay, so that's gonna set kernel 
kernel default, kernel black hole, originated, originated default, static, static black hole. Um, static default customer customer black hole own own black hole own default is duplicated peering transit transit default and we're pretty much going to need the same thing for our other our um, redis dot redistribution our um, outgoing large communities I think. chat give me a moment Cool beans, mate. What small program did you write in the beginning? Any standout? Uh, me. I don't think any of my programs have been small, mate. Um, the first real sort of piece of Python, I would say, that was relatively... Well, I don't know about the first one, but a sort of after, I don't know, over 10 years or so of not really using Python sort of mainstream. The first project I took after that period was um, was our operating system installer, and that's by no means small and by no means easy. Um, but that I'd say would have been the first one after quite a long. Well, I don't know about break, I still did use Python, but not as much. I don't think any of my projects have been very small. Oh, I do have a small project though. Um, I don't know if it was like the first one or anything. It actually may have been. Um, actually, um, talk to her day. <laughs> You're going to laugh at this project, mate. Um, it's my CRDR tool over here. very simple flask application that probably is done totally incorrectly it's something i implemented for my staff to use and that i think was the first thing i was testing python out for before we switched over to using it very small program it's literally just got one page and three template files which are very simple <laughs> I got really pissed off because we use um, CIDR tools quite a bit and they do not always provide all of the information which we need like for instance that tool um, is some critical things that we need from it which are um, give me a second 
if we put in an IP. We need the reverse DNS to be easily copyable without trying to fucking figure it out in your head. Um, it also tells you if the IP address is a is a private IP or not, which we need when a client provides IP for routing to quickly see that it is a IP that is on the internet. If I use one of my provider's IPs, um, it does not say it is private, so it's an internet IP. And then we can always specify something like um, um, a range. It provides us with the first IP, the last IP, right? That is useful if you got a bigger range, like a slash 23 or a slash 20 fucking one. We can easily see the range over here. And we do have a few clients that ask for the net mask or so. So we can easily provide the net mask to them. It also has got um, IPv6 support, which if you give it a single IP, it gives you the reverse IPv6 address, which is extremely useful. It also provides the exploded um, IPv6 address as well, which we use for some of our providers where on their reverse DNS entry forms or so, they require the exploded IPv6 address to be able to add it. It also provides the compressed address as well. So if you've got zeros in here, we should just get FEC zero colon colon one, you see, from that. So that's pretty useful as well. And then it's also got the range two, which is like um, CS slash 32. Okay, we can check what the, well, um, obviously what the exploded address is for that, but the first IP, the first exploded IP and the last exploded IP. These over here help us to determine where the breaking point of the bit mask is. So if we go like 34, for instance, or wait, maybe not 34, maybe um, 42. Maybe a bit bigger than 42, actually. Um, 40. There we go. You can see that the breaking point of the bit mask is over here. It's pretty useful. Um, it is, but we don't work with broadcast and network addresses. So you obviously need to know that there is a broadcast and a network address. I mean, those don't actually mean anything. Um, there isn't anything stopping well. It depends how your network is routed. Um, if you're using slash 31s, right? There is no network and there's no broadcast address at all. There's just a zero and a one. And you can use both of those. Although some really fucked up hardware, and I will drop a name there, um, namely Microtik or so, even though this is an internet standard, even though it is a fucking internet standard, they do not support using that with BGP. Internet standard, slash 31s, they do not support using it which is really fucked up. It's from the year two fucking thousand. 20 years ago, internet standard for a slash 31. And they don't support it for BGP. That's the most fucked up vendor on the face of the planet, I tell you. The amount of issues that we have is absolutely insane with them. There is for um, for an um, ISP point to point link, unless if you want to waste two more IPs. And seeing as you can't get any more IPs these days, you pretty 
much have to use slash 31s to properly conserve IP space. So there's definitely a very big use case for it, I uh, mate. You can also do slash 127s as well. There's slash 127s in IPv6, which we also use extensively. It also prevents broadcasts. I mean, not that you're going to have very many broadcasts on a slash 30 or so, but it prevents broadcast traffic as well. So just zero, one, you just only have to have two IPs and you can then use two and three and four and five, for instance. So it's a pretty standard way of what, um, of what most large ISPs do at the moment is they use slash 31s and slash 127s. Just to be more on the standard side of having things set up, you know. But obviously, if it's a if if it's a LAN or so, slash thirty one makes close to no sense, if not even less than no sense at all. Um. Hmm. Okay, so we're gonna then override connected. We're gonna override kernel. So kernel will not mm, mm, a match kernel black hole and kernel default. That's why if it's set to kernel, we set both of those. So you can pretty much, um, does that make any sense though? If we set kernel, we override these two as well. And then kernel will be set below over here. And then these two, you can then override. So you could have kernel set to five and then kernel black hole set to one. In which case it would set kernel black hole to five here and then reset kernel black hole below here to one. I think that is fine. Um, we do the same for static. We do the same for originated. We do the same for our special ones, BGP. And um, we probably actually need BGP to be added here and default. even though it's not going to get set because those are set above is the default options. Um, we're not going to be doing anything with the PGP prepending at all. Only each of the options under it. Um, so check that we are not doing something stupid. So that is, oh my God, we're going to have to fix the server here as well. We're going to have to fix all of these. So this is pretty much going to be kernel default. So if the peer type is peer root collected root server or transit, we cannot export default routes to it. Um, um, can we just say if prepend type um, ends with or should we list each one it doesn't support that's a good question I think I just quickly need some more coffee though um, I will be right back if you just give me a few moments chat just give me one second Give me one second. I will be I'll be right back.
Okay, chat. Wait, wait, wait. Um, so invalid configurations, right? We'd be sending any default root. to a peer root collector root server or transit provider. Also a, uh, a client would be fine. So this would have to be kernel default. It would have to be static default. It would have to be originated default. It would have to be PGP own default. It would have to be PGP peering. BGP transit. And transit default, right? What can't we advertise to appear? We can't advertise. We don't have to put the default in there. That just sets the defaults for the roots, right? So it'll just be kernel default, static default, originated default, own default, peering, and or peering transit and transit default. Okay. And the next thing we probably also need to do. Oh, we do have a, bl a, bl a black hole one here. So that would be kernel black hole. Static black hole. So we don't send black holes to. Oh, these are the only ones we do send black holes to. So anything outside of that, we shouldn't be sending black holes to. So it'll be kernel black hole, static black hole, BGP own black hole. BGP customer black hole. BGP customer. BGP customer black hole. We might actually What about setting a default for all black holes? <laughs> well, that's going down another rabbit hole, but if we added that, I'd say this is pretty complete. Oh my dear Jesus, I'm gonna stop adding fucking functionality here, seriously. I'm gonna seriously fucking stop doing this. Um, we need to then add that into our outgoing large communities as well. Or we just put here 
needs to be synced with prepend option um, prepend docs. Uh, black hole. Okay, where do we need that then? Over here. And then we can put it over here. And we need all the black holes, which is going to be kernel black hole. Originated black hole. No, you are no originated black hole, it's a static black hole. BGP own black hole and customer black hole. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, well, that fucking sucks ass. Um, so we need to add it over here. No, we don't. We don't need to add it over here. One, two, three, four. Okay. So black holes aren't supported for those systems then, right? Um, the other thing is, what about the types of... How do these ones work? Oh, but that's fine. So this is like a double direction sort of thing. We don't redistribute any of these to any of these, and we don't redistribute like peering to grid collector, transit to any, well, peering to anything, transit to anything. Um, in terms of the customer though, We export everything to a customer except black holes. So this one would then be... I think that this should be matching everything. I think this should be fine. I'm not sure, but we'll see. But then again, if we set prepending like this, right, it's going to set everything. But we can set that for all the peer types. We just can't specify an individual option for it. So if we set prepend, it'll only prepend for the specific one. So, so I think that that should be fine. I think that should be fine. We'll have to see. We will have to see. The thing is, we are going to be adding everything for it, which is a bit of a fucking problem then, isn't it? Um, um, Yeah, the one. 
we probably have to do some more code here. We probably have to add the peer type. Probably have to add the peer type for some of these. So the only ones we don't export black holes to are customer and peer, right? It's not, it's not going to really make any difference, but pretty sure it's only customer and peer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Customer and peer would be nine. Yes, it's only customer and peer that we don't export black holes to. So we don't want that function to be output, even though it's not even used. And default routes is only internal systems and customer. So this needs to be a software peer type, not in. Um, oh my god. This will be which ones we do export to. Or which ones we don't export it to. Um, root collector, root server, peer, transit. Would it be fast or less code if we did soft appear type in internal customer or client or server or server or server? Hmm, that's longer. The exclusions instead, fuck it. Um, this over here is a default as well. This over here is a default as well. This over here is a default as well. Over here is also a default. Okay. This code is really fucked up. I don't know if we should like try and split it a bit like this. I don't know if adding spaces is the best of ideas. I don't know if that's more readable or not. It's probably just as bad, right? There's a lot of if statements here. Okay, black holes. Need one for static black hole. I don't want to add this if to the end though. It's easier to see what we are matching by 
checking a line rather than having a fucking if at the end of it or the other thing at the end of it as well. It's easier to see this way exactly what's going on here. I'd rather choose readability over combining if statements. Um, own black hole. And customer black hole. Okay. Jesus. And then see we do have a prepend BGP here though which doesn't match the other two types of the roots so maybe we do need BGP normal BGP roots then for prepending oh we do because it's the real it's the relation types that we have isn't it But what would happen if we wanted to prepend things in different quantities, like prepend BGP three, but prepend client four? What would happen there? This would set the default for everything to three. It would then set the client to four. If we had it the other way, where we are actually um, are matching on BGP roots, what it would do is it would prepend client three and then again BGP four. So we can't actually do that way. That way is just going to be more confusing. So I think we need to actually remove a function then. We need to remove peer prepend BGP. Where's that used? I'm hoping in just one place. I'm um, hey there, I'm Linux Povo TV. How's it going, mate? Let's see where this peer. I mean, we can always see if things break, right? So if we comment it out, we can see how many things are going to break from that. It shouldn't be anywhere. Okay, so we are then going to remove this. Maybe we comment it. Let me just add a fix me there. Let me add a fix me here. Okay, so. God, this is a fucking disaster, really. Um, What else aren't we redistributing somewhere else here? Probably just need to exclude it. So, we've got... Connected roots, kernel roots, kernel black holes are sorted, kernel default roots are sorted, originated roots are sorted, originated default roots are sorted, our own roots are sorted, black holes sorted, default sorted, um, own BGP roots, that is sorted, own black holes are sorted, own default is sorted, customer roots are sorted, Customer black hole is sorted. There isn't anywhere where we don't redistribute a customer root to. Peering is going to be a problem. 
peering we do not redistribute to um, so if self.peer type not in customer internal or server or we should actually have our client our server and our server our server then we do not do prepending for that so we do not advertise peering routes to anything other than customer internal our client our server and our server our server right um transit routes we do not advertise to the same places i think right we only advertise transit to customer internal our client our server our server, server. that's correct okay God, and this fucking function is also more than 132 char characters long. It's 133. Hope that's okay. Um, transit, we only advertise, or we. What? Transit default? Why has it got fucking. Wait a minute. I think I've become a bit confused here. We got all of these which are exclusions. Maybe we should just make them all inclusions like we have over here. It might be a better idea. So if peer type is in, Um, root collector internal root collector root server our oh, client our oh, server server our oh, server Default routes, if peer type is in internal, I should remove all of this and put customer internal our client our server our server server. That's for default routes. all the default root instances with that okay and then black holes which is this one we can replace all the black hole if statements with that right Right, well, not really, right? Because we still have these that are fucked up as well. So peering can only be advertised to custom internal or client or server or server server. Um, transit can only be advertised to custom internal or client or server or server server. And we sorted our transit default, okay. Oh my dear Jesus, this is this this just looks really bad, I think. Um hey there, I'm Eric XDXD. How's it going, mate? How's it going, man? Okay, chat. This is the worst piece of code we have everywhere. Apart from that one test we have, right? That is slightly worse than this, but I want to have this easily readable to see what the peer types are and then under it what we're doing. And they are all in order as well. I would prefer not to um, not to remove the order that we have. We're gonna have to do the same for fucking 
large communities, hey? That's going to be even worse. Oh, my dear Jesus. That's going to be even worse to do. But we'll worry about that in a different at a different time. Why is this funk? Not sure why that is funk. That should be the fucking function name. So should this one. Everything's slightly better named. Why is funk being used everywhere? Don't understand that. Makes no sense to me, man. Just wish that those things would fit within a um, F string somehow on more than one line. It would be nice. Okay. So if we do format document, it should all get nicely formatted. Well, not really that that nice, but I think it might be acceptable. Okay, so we've removed the peer prepend BGP option. Um, we've added the peer prepend BGP own. Um. It's going to slightly fuck up our debug logs though, but I think that it should be okay. Instead of receiving one debug output to say we're prepending all BGP routes, we're going to receive a debug for the, the various type of routes it is that we are prepending. I think that that's fine. I think that that is fine. Okay, then we need to probably check these black holes out. So we've got our function over here, which has got no exclusions or anything in it. So this one should be excluding default roots and black hole roots. So we can probably replace this block with BGP own. What was that before? Oh, self that is BGP own. So if it isn't our own root, or if it's a default root, or if it's a black hole root, we don't, we're not going to prepend it. Okay, I think that that is a fine, which means then for if it is a black hole root, we can then just copy this, right? And we just fill up that if statement. BGP own to BGP own black hole. Okay, um, and then what we do is we just put if it isn't a black hole. So if it isn't our own root, and if it isn't a black hole, or if it's a default root, we return false. So that should be fine. And this will be BGP own black hole then. And this we can then move over here. We can move this into another line. Hey there, Fact and Plays. How's it going, Matt? Thanks a lot for the follow, man. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks, man. Okay, BGP peer prepend BGP own black hole. Okay, so black hole is in sorted out, right? So if we update that, we got that sorted. Chat, this looks absolutely terrible, man. I'm not proud of this piece, but. 
Not sure what we can do about that. Really not sure how we can fix this shit up to look a bit better, but I guess for now it's just gonna have to stay like that. Um, next would be BGP own default. So all we do there is we just copy our black hole function over here and we just flip the if statement again. Uh, we rename black hole to default, black hole to default. Oh, we can't just rename it, can we? It'll have to be own black hole and own default. And select and replace. And we then flip these two around. So if it isn't our own root, we return false. If it isn't a default root, we return false. And if it is a... Wait a minute, that's the wrong way around, isn't it? Oh, no. Or if it is a black hole root, we return false. So we basically then prepend everything else. So that'll be default then. So PGP own default. So that should be good. Okay. And so that function sorted out. Next function would be prepend BGP customer. Okay. Well, we just do the same there then, right? Customer hasn't been updated either. So we can just copy own and we can just fucking shove it in here. And we go is BGP customer. And it can't be a default root and can't be a black hole root. Well, there's no actual fucking sense in it being a default root. Or a, um, there's no sense in it being a black hole root because we can't advertise black holes to customers. But I think if we just keep all of these the same, it's easier to see what's going on instead of having things that are completely different all over the place. Okay, so anyway, um, if it isn't a customer root or if it's a default root or if it's a black hole root, we return false. So we don't do the prepending. So then what we probably just need to do is copy the um, prepend BGP customer into prepend BGP customer uh, default, right? It was default. Why have we got customer black? Oh, wait a minute. I think we got a problem here. We don't export black hole roots to customers. Why do we even have this here? Oh, it's if we are peered with like an internal system, we've received a customer black hole root and we're now advertising the customer black hole root to the other system, right? In which case this actually does make perfect sense. So um, if we then just rename um, BGP custom, oh shit, fuck. BGP customer with BGP customer. Was that black hole, right? Black hole. Right. Select, replace, sorted. Why is this now throwing a fucking issue? It should be is BGP customer. Um, give me a second. I'm just going up here to see what the fuck I've done. BGP own, that should be own default root. This should be own black hole root. This should be own root. We didn't add anything else, right? What's this over here? Prepend kernel default. Why do we have comments for those functions but we don't have for anything else let's fucking just remove them we don't need no fucking comments mate who needs comments in their code i'm just joking <laughs> the function description is pretty fucking um self-explanatory or the function name so it's fine okay so 
customer black hole, right? If it isn't customer, and if it isn't black hole, uh, or if it is a default route, then return false. We're not going to prepend it. So this over here would then be four type PGP customer black hole. Um, that's probably exceeded our line length again, which it has. Can move that to the next line and move this one one up. Okay, um, that should hopefully be fine. Yes, that looks a bit better. Well, not actually better, but not as fucked up. BGP Transit default. So let's grab BGP Transit then. Um, it also needs to be updated as well. Oh fuck, why? Why on earth? Why on earth is all I can say. Anyway, um, let's copy BGP Transit. Let's fucking fix this shit up a bit. Um, let us pull in that if block that we have over here. We're going to do the same shit over here. And that is a transit provider route, right? So it'll be if is BGP Transit. Or if it isn't BGP Transit. Um, wait a minute, it's not Transit, it's fucking... Um, it is transit and transit default. So it's transit and transit default. Transit and transit default. So maybe instead of copying it first off, let's fix the if statement first. Let's fix the if statement first. Um, okay, so is BGP transit so that's not going to be be matching a transit default route and it's not going to be matching a black hole which is pretty much impossible to have anyway so if it's not bgp transit or if it is a default route or if it is a black hole route then we're going to return false else we are just going to prepend it Okay, so that's fine. Let's copy that over here and then let's say if it is not a transit default route and then we can pretty much change BGP transit to BGP transit default and we can do it in the block of hours over here. Right. We probably just have to fix this again. Okay, so BGP prepend. Why is that peer prepend? What? Why is it? Oh, I suppose that that's fine. BGP peer prepend BGP transit. What a fucking mouthful. Um, so if it isn't transit or if it's a default route, wait, we were on BGP transit default. So if it isn't transit or if it isn't a default route, or if it is a black hole, return false, and then this would be then called transit default. Hey there, ungod. How's it going, mate? I'll check your Discord now. There we go, I replied. Sorry about that. I'm just stirring in my mind with a spork here, as usual. Um, so this over here, let's move root information up a bit. Why is this on another fucking line? What on earth is even happening with our debug lines here, chat? Uh, well, I see, I see, I see problems here. Oh no, oh no, it's fine. It's fine. It's actually a print that's on more than one line, so it's fine. Okay. Okay. Um, 
So what we have is BGP PA prepend BGP transit default. So that's prepending all BGP transit default routes. And if it isn't transit, if it isn't default, or if it is black hole, we return false. And if it doesn't match any of those, we then just do a fucking prepend on it. So that should be good. Okay, is it time to see if our unit tests break? Probably, right? Probably. I don't see any other problems here, but as we know, as we fucking know, chat, there's always problems hiding around the corner. So let us then take customer. Let us do this one first. BGP prepay and BGP customer five times, right? This is going to fucking blow up and explode and throw errors everywhere. I can almost guarantee you that. Let us run. Oh my dear Jesus. Good. And test. Let us throw the test and write expected. And we're going to see balls of fire and flames and smoke and shit flying everywhere. I'm just quickly deleting some of my email here. Give me a moment, chat. How many of my staff are fucking on leave today? Jesus. Okay. Okay, so configuration item. We've got a problem over here. We've got a problem over here. But a big problem over here. What is that exception now? Configuration item default not understood in BGP accept. Uh, okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, what we need to figure out then is where are we? We need to pull in. See it in accept, right? Oh, what router was that for? Where is where is that shit gone? It doesn't say what fucking router it's for. That's very helpful. Anyway, even though it does not say what router it's for, let's figure it out. Um, so prepending, it'll probably be R1. Uh, but we need to update this as well. We need to suck in kernel default. We need to suck in static default. Um, originated is uh, suck, sucked in by default. We don't need to accept it though. We don't need to accept the default route into our routing tables, however. Well, I suppose, I suppose, I suppose we could, but would this not then be, um, BGP default? Oh, it would be own default. This is, but this is for R1. Why would we be accepting it? R2 isn't advertising anything, so that does not make any sense, does it? I think we can remove that. Um, we probably have to synchronize our routing tables though, seeing as we added a considerable um, amount of routes more. And we change some shit up a bit. Let us just copy our routing tables over here. Shove you in there, mate. Just changing 101 .201. And we need to pull in our originated routes as well. Originated routes, which are these ones over here. Undo, redo, undo, redo, undo, redo. Why is it in ETH2 on the interface though? That's a bit weird. 
Why do we have an ETH2 interface chat? What does that even mean? I suppose we need the ETH2 over there then. Okay. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, we probably need a ETH2 configuration, which might actually help quite considerably. ETH2 configuration. Where are we going to shove you, mate? Um, probably fucking here somewhere. I don't fucking know. That looks fine, sort of. Okay, um... So that is our our static roots, our originated roots. We now need some kernel roots thrown into the mix. Cool beans, on God, have a good one, mate. Mate, don't die on me, please. Thanks, bye. Okay, thanks, bye, mate. Um, grab the kernel roots. Fucking squirt them into here. Okay. Well, they were the same, so that's okay. Hey there, Oscar Forest. Are you back, mate? <laughs> Monkey is slow. Okay, so. This is the redistribution then. Um, redistribute default. Do we even have a redistribute default option? Hey there, SBO. Thanks for the follow, mate. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks, man. Do we even have a re redistribute default option, or do you explicitly have to specify the type of route we're redistributing? I guess you have to explicitly specify it, chat. Oh my dear Jesus. Um Hmm, well that is a uh, I suppose that is actually probably good practice to do that. I suppose it's good practice to do it that way. Where is our fucking test gone? Where did you go, you fuck? It was over here, right? Yeah. So we need to redistribute then um, BGP own default routes we don't have any that we're receiving from e1 so it would be just our own default routes and then we need to redistribute kernel black hole static black hole um we're not going to do own hang on a second but won't be own default it would be um static default it would be kernel default oh fuck kernel default um, and originated default. Originated default. All emotes are now boxes. Wait, what? What does that even mean, mate? How can they all be boxes? I don't know. I don't fucking know, mate. We got Borg cubes today. It must be something to do with fucking OBS or something. I don't know. Or stream elements. So can we just throw Borg cubes everywhere? We did something like that. Yep. Those are Borg cubes going everywhere, I guess. I don't know why that is, man. Okay, so redistribute kernel default, original default, static default um, for black holes, kernel black hole, static black hole. Um, mark black hole capable EBGPP 
peers, we mark black hole capable EPGB peers, which allows us to test the prepending of black hole roots. I think we should be good to test this again. I think we should be good. Let's test it out. Totally magic, man. Totally magic. Okay, so no attributes originated. What? Originated default. What the fuck does that even mean? Why is there no attributes that originated default? What the hell has gone wrong, mate? Originated default. Oh! There is no originated default. Whoopsie daisy. That's not good. Originated default. That's a little bit better. Okay. Let's see what happens now. Let's see what happens now, mate. Well, we've got some some I'm rooting tables that are not the same, but that's fine. That that I don't think is too much of a problem. Um, where the fucking hell are we in the test now? T eighty, T eighty prepending. Uh, we did delete everything, so it's China and black shit. Okay, let us see what our output looks like. That should be prepend customer roots. Okay, so this is our own root. This is a customer root. Oh, we do have an E1. Oh, fuck. Well, 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 well. We might need a little bit more configuration here. That's why we had an accept here, isn't it, chat? That's why we had the accept there. We don't accept default roots by default, right? Don't think so. Um, where are we going to find the documentation for accept? Customer black hole allows us to accept black hole roots that originate from a customer. This is only valid for peer types customer internal to or a client or so or so or so. The default is true for peer types internal or or client or a server or so or so. The default is true for peer type customer when filter prefixes is set. So it'll be own default and transit default and pretty actually pretty much all of these. Unless, no, 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 we j just need own default and transit default. Okay, okay, own default and transit default. So where the fuck did that go now? This one over here, right? Own default, oops, fuck, Jesus, true. And BGP, transit default, true. Okay, own default, transit default. Um, let us delete our results. Let us rerun our test. And let's see what the output looks like.
Okay, it's China Blacker. And then let us. We don't have any setup failures, right? No, we don't. So that's the most important thing. Okay, so that's R1 facing E1. I don't think we have to worry about that. There's all of our default routes. Where is our prepending happening? There we go. Well, that's one prepended. So this is supposed to test customer root prepending. So if we check any customer routes here, we probably actually also need a customer to advertise a black hole to us, don't we? Well, that's going to be even more interesting to do. Uh, how are we even going to do that? Um, oh, that's pretty easy. So um, E1 is actually probably a root reflector. So we can just fake the information into the root, root reflector. Yeah, it's the root reflector. So that's pretty easy to do. We can just fake information, you know. So we can add a customer um, black hole as well, which would be say 104.0 fucking slash 32. And it'll be, um, oh God, what fucking attributes do we add to it, chat? We need to just add a community, right? Hmm, what fucking attributes do we add to a customer's black hole? Um, We don't... What the fucking music is this? Jesus, Christmas tree, Christmas tree. What the fuck is going on here? Which one of you was playing with my playlist? Okay, and why? I thought I had instrumentals. Why is this got fucking people singing? Dude, don't sing, please. It's distracting. Okay. 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 So, um, customer black hole root. Hmm. What does that look like? It's pretty much, I think we just need these communities here. Um, and then these ones over here as well, to say to export it. Okay, I suppose that that's, that's fair enough. So, um, we need those ones, right? Oops. Those communities. We need this one over here, right, and we probably need to split this up a bit. Right, large communities, um, and then we probably need to split it up again, oh for fuck's sake mate. We need to add community and we need to add these communities which is what we would have added if we were actually peering with a customer okay so that's no export and black hole and this one here is export to um, peering partners uh, or fucking I don't know, everywhere and everywhere. Or with these two combined is pretty much export everywhere. Okay. So that is a black hole received from a customer that we're now testing out prepending on. So in our test, that should get prepended with this specific test we're doing. And then we probably are going to need our own default route as well. And our own black hole route as well. 
So we're going to need our own default root 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, slash 0. Next top 3. We'll have to see how that works out. And what does a black hole look like if we've received it from our own federation? Own black hole from an internal system. What shit do we have here, mate? Um, pretty much the exact same thing. Pretty much the exact same thing, man. X uh, two large communities, two smaller communities, or two normal communities. So default roots is there isn't anything special about that, but the black hole, however. However, is going to be slightly fucking different, mate. That is going to be three one. Oh, so it's not actually that different, is it? Three one, three large communities, two normal communities. Right? Do we have all the communities we need? Three large. Too normal okay okay so the community should be good community should be okay there um, so that's own own root and roots normal root black hole root default root customer roots normal root black hole root Peer root, transit root, we need a transit default root. And that, my friends, will be. Oh fuck, we can't send the transit default root, can we? We can't. Oh shit, give me a moment, chat. Can't send a transit default fucking route, man. Give me a second. Okay, well, that's going to be an issue. We're going to have to spin up an E2, chat. We can't send two default routes. Oh, my dear Jesus, man. Well, transit default route. Here we go, boys. Oh, fuck. We're going to have to do this the same with V6. Oh, my God. Oh my god. Anyway, let's just fucking get this shit done. Let's copy um, E1. You know, uh, we can't do that. We can rename it though. We don't need the AS number. Copy E1. Quality 2. And let's throw in IP2, router ID3, same local AS, local address 4. Uh, hang on a second. Neighbor would be the same, right? Why is that 64 and that's 100? Mm -hmm. Makes no sense. 
I'm th I'm this isn't Django or Flask, mate. This is a command line tool. Router ID three. Okay. Then we need to add another root reflector to R1. As E2. Same ASN. Uh, oh fuck, we can't use 3, can we? Why is E1 3? Oh, E1 is 3. So this one has to be 4 then. Okay. Okay, fair enough. It can be four. It can be four, mate. No problem. Dude, I have got... Huh, give me a second. How many ends do you want to see? There's 837 of them, mate. I can't really show you all of them. It's kind of a couple. You can check the source cut out here. Hang on a sec. Give me a second. That's from two months ago though, but once our tests are passing, we can finally commit it or finally send a merge request that'll actually pass our CI tests. Um, E2. So E2 is also a root reflector then, and it's just gonna be sending it's just gonna be sending the transit default route. So neighbor one announce root transit default next top large community three four. I don't think we need any other large communities on it, do we? So if we accept a uh, that's originated. If we accept a BGP default root from transit transit default true yeah we just need three four we don't need anything else really um, we also need the AS path set though we also need the AS path set to six five double zero one or six five double zero one is actually probably a very bad idea but um, how do we set the AS path up top here? Where the fuck is that even? How do we set the AS path for that? We don't set the AS path for it. What? How can that even be? We don't set the A Oh! That's weird. That is very weird. How do we have that set up? Do we have that set up as 6.5? Set up the same way. Oh. I think we do need to set the AS path though. Or oh, it's not going to be... What is R2? Oh, fuck, R2 is probably fucking 65001, isn't it? R2 is 65001. Ah, uh, E1 is 65001 as well. Why is E1 65001, chat? Doesn't make too much sense to me. E1 is 65000. Okay, so then maybe E2 needs to be 65000 as well. Oh my god. What is E2 at the moment? It's got the correct IP. Then again, so does E1 have the correct IP. Why are we setting its IP over here? We probably don't need to do that. 
E2 is then going to be 6 for our triple zero as well. Um, and the ASN that we, s or the AS path that we send with our default route is then going to have a AS path on it. Right. AS path of six five double zero fucking I don't know two three um give me a sec give me just one sec Okay, 65003 might work. Maybe, 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 maybe. Um, okay, well, let us see what happens. Are we actually gonna get that E2 root then? Let's check. Probably we're going to get a setup failure of some sort. Probably. Come on, test. We need to check the routing table, mate. Jesus, that's taking a while. I think we just need to delete all of our output data first. Okay, let's try that again. Let's see what we get. Why is bird status taking so long to run? That's weird. Let's try to black that and see what it looks like. Yeah, we're not getting any roots at all from E1 or, or E2. What the fuck? How can that even be? That doesn't make any sense to me, man. Unless we're switching... We're not switching the type of root routers. Why are we not getting any roots from them now? How is that remotely possible? <sighs> 3 and 4. IP3, IP4. Right, connecting 2.1. Unless it's because I changed the interface. <gasps> This is two, which conflicts with fucking, that is why we had a different IP there. Okay, my mistake, my mistake. Let's just override. It's fucking override everything, mate. Um, uh, IP3. And E2's IP is going to be 4. Okay, we need to update our readme file with that. So we've now also got E E2, right? Where the fuck is E2 going to fit into the diagram? Fuck, is he too gonna fit in? Okay.
<sighs> so we've got E1 and E2. This should probably be something like up instead. That actually looks a little bit better. Here we go. Jesus. We're gonna have to fix that fucking readme file. That's I think we do that as soon as we're done with this set of tests. Uh, okay, let's delete our results again. Let us see if we're getting the root set we need. We're going to probably have to add some more anyway. So we've got our own root, our own black hole root, our own default root. We got our customer root, a customer black hole root, a peer root, a transit root, a transit default root, root server root. I think that that should be enough roots. Um, that should cover pretty much all of the peer types that we have. For IPv4, we still have to do the IPv6 one. So. Okay, here we go. We are receiving the roots that we need but this over here is not correct why are we not accepting the root is sending us a default root oh interesting uh Maybe because we need to have some shit over here like accept BGP own default true BGP transit default true. It's probably what the problem is. So Black hole roots we accept by default, but default roots we don't accept by default, which is kind of fucked up, but it sounds kind of fucked up, but it's actually correct. Okay, so we now need... Can we just copy the V4 roots into V6 and just adjust them? I feel like trying to figure this out. Own roots, customer roots, transit roots... Own roots, customer roots, transit roots. Okay, where's V6 gone? Jesus Christ, this shit is like rocking all over the place. Can we not just go IPv6 over here? Oh shit, fuck. What did I just do? IPv6. And we can maybe go IPv4 up top here then. Okay, 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 so this is then going to be FC101, right, and it's going to be announcing a slash 128, right. Which has an IP address of that. The communities will stay the same. The default root will change to colon colon slash zero. The next top needs to be fixed. Okay. So that's an IPv6 default root and black hole. Okay, what what else do we need for this? We need a customer black hole as well. Customer black hole. Um, these IPs don't conflict. No, they don't. Okay, cool. Slash one twenty eight with the next top. Okay, communities stay the same for that. 
then we need a transit default route which will be this one over here oh for fuck's sake why did i press that button transit default route and we got this to put in here and this would then be colon colon slash zero the next up would be the ipv6 well actually that would be four though it would actually be four not three okay jesus um and we are accepting own default routes transit default routes from both of them so let us see what happens when we run our test again let's delete expected results let's rerun right expected let's see what the output looks like Give me just one second chat. I see a quick chicken email here. Oh my god, I forgot to reply. I forgot to click send an email to a client. Whoops. Give me a moment. Give me a moment, chat. Give me a moment. Um, okay. Where were we? We were busy checking. Give 
if we're getting the roots we should be getting, right? Let's do a channel back here. Let's see what we've got to work with here. Default root from our internal system is fine. We've got a normal internal root. We've got a black hole root from our internal system over here. We've got a normal customer root. We've got a customer black hole root. We've got a peer root. We've got a root server root. We've got a, or is that a transit route? I don't know. It does not really matter. Transit and the root server route. And then for E2, we are importing our transit default route. Right? And all of these routes are coming from E1 that we're sharing with E2 because E2 is the root reflector. And then R1 facing R2, I think, is where our magic is going to be happening. So we've got redistribution on default routes enabled. So we're literally sending it all of them. Except it seems we're not sending it to the transit default route, though. Why would that be? E1 facing R2. Because we're not redistributing everything. That's probably why. But, hang on, it's not redistributing everything, but where are these routes coming from? That's yeah, the originated default, kernel default, and static default. How are those getting there? Probably with template peer extra config. Yeah, that's exactly how they're getting there. Give me a moment. Sorry, Chad, I just had a fucking sneeze, man. Jesus. Um... These must be the redistribution settings. Okay, so... Okay, in terms of what we're going to do here then. If we reran this now. Let's delete our output again. Let's rerun the test. If we run China Black, um, R1 facing E2, or R1 facing R2, we've got our two default routes from ourselves and from our transit provider, and a couple more. Okay, and we should only see in this specific test should be prepend BGP customer. 
So the only route that we should see being prepended is I think one of them, right? This is a normal customer PGP route. That's a normal customer route coming in on E1 and it's being prepended one, two, three, four, five times. So that is correct. And is it anything else being prepended? Amazing. That is actually a hundred percent. For that specific test though. Okay, well, I'm a little bit more confident now that these are going to be working as expected. Um, that means that if we rename customer to um, customer black hole, this is going to be customer black hole, right? That should be prepending just a customer black hole route but we would need to test it from the perspective of an internal system. Um, so maybe what we do here is we probably need to add all of them. Own black hole. And Add own default. Oh shit, we're gonna have to copy the other test that we have here. Oh shit. We need to copy transit to transit default. Right. Um, that is plain default. That is plain BGP. We're going to have kernel default as well. going to have originated default and we're going to have static default okay So we've got customer black hole, own black hole, own default, transit default, default. We said we were adding black hole as well, right? Um. We did add black hole and we did add it to our documentation, I fucking hope. Where's our documentation for that? Prepend black hole. We did add it to our documentation. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so what we need then to copy default to black hole okay Okay, I think that's all the tests we need. There's quite a couple. There is quite a fucking couple in this set. I 
Okay, so what we're then going to do is we need to copy all of these then as well. Oh my dear Jesus. Um, why do these have... configuration in them. Isn't that configuration being pulled in from config? Six five double zero one six five triple zero. Yep. That's being pulled in from config. I don't know why we have it here. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, I think we might need to restart VS Code, by the way. It's starting to get a bit slow. Give me a moment. Okay. Let us sort out our three terminals. Okay, so we need to do some renaming or some copying here. And we need to copy the customer test to the customer black hole test. So this is going to be BGP customer. And we're going to copy customer to customer black hole. And we're going to replace Customer import with customer black hole import copy. Well, it didn't work as expected. Perfect. And then we need to copy own to own default. GP own to BGP own default. Right. And then we need a copy. Oh God, there's so many of these. Can't really split them off again, can we? Actually, I suppose we could. 
we could split all of these up chat i think we'll do that um well, once you have them working out we're going to split all of these up because this is too many things to have in one directory i prefer to have like a whole bunch of sub directories for it i don't like that how it is now um own default we've got own black hole so the next one we need to do is transit We're copying transit. We actually have transit default. Copy this to BGP transit black hole. Transit import to transit black hole import we don't know man why are we doing fucking transit black holes that doesn't make any sense i'm going crazy here I'm going crazy man it should be transit default not fucking transit black hole what the fuck am i even doing so transit BGB transit to BGB transit default transit import to transit default import fuck and I see another mistake I made I created a zero BGP file zero BGP Rename zero BGP to BGP. Um, oh my god, we then do we have to replace anything? I don't think so. Okay, fair enough. Quick and easy, and it didn't work, obviously. Maybe it's an O. Um, hey there, Master Dark Weaver. How's it going, mate? What are you up to, man? It was zero BGP. What the fuck is up with... What the fuck is up with... Oh, I see what I did. Well, that's kind of fucked up. That should have been a move, not a copy. Oh, for fuck's sake. That should have been a move, mate. Okay, so we got customer, we got customer black hole. Customer, customer black hole. We got own. We got own default. We need own black hole, right? So, own default, and we replace default with black hole, and we replace default import with black hole import. Oh, why did I move them? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, mate. Jesus. Chad, I'm sorry, I'm slow, man. I'm fucking slow. Black hole. Default. Black hole. Default. Own. Black hole. Okay. Finally, we got two tests now. Okay, next we got peering. Wait a minute. So we got customer black hole, customer own black hole, own default, own peering, transit default, transit. Own peering, transit default, transit. 
BGP, we don't have a black hole one. We don't have a black hole, so we need to replace um, um, BGP or prepend default.py. with black hole and default import to black hole import okay I've kind of fucked this up, but it's fine. We'll fix him now. We'll fix him shortly, chat. Don't worry. So we got transit and transit default, right? We then have black um, BGP black hole connected. BGP black hole connected. We then have default. We then have kernel black hole, kernel default. We don't have kernel default here. So kernel, why don't we even have, that's very weird. Anyway, um, kernel black hole is gonna be named to kernel default and black hole import it's going to be named to default import okay that's that sorted out so we got kernel black hole kernel default kernel black hole kernel default kernel kernel originated oh fuck originated we need like originate oh we have originated default here but we don't have it up top here so we need originated default Um, so this would be BGP originated, right? No, it's not BGP originated. It's just originated. And I said we're creating originated default. So originated default. So that'll be originated import. To originated default import. Okay. Originated default, originated static black hole. We need a static default as well. Static black hole. Black hole default. Call default. Okay, chat that we will be splitting these up. Don't panic, don't panic. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. And we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Fuck, I'm missing one. Um, we got customer, black hole, customer. Customer, black hole, customer. We got own black hole, own default. Own black hole, own default. Own peering, own peering. Transit, default, transit. Transit, default, transit. BGP. Black hole connected default. Black hole connected default. Kernel black hole. Kernel black hole. Kernel default. Kernel default. Kernel originated default originated. Kernel originated default originated. Static black hole static default. Static black hole static default. And static. Static. Oh, and then prepend. I don't see a problem here. One. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. Oh, for fuck's sake. I can't even fucking count, chat. Jesus. Okay. Let's make sure that all of these have got the right template being used over here. Um... Kernel default can be exported, so we don't need an exception. Oh god, we're probably going to have exceptions everywhere for that. Uh, we'll, I think we go through one of these sets at a time. I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, kernel default, where don't we export default routes to? We don't export default routes to root collector. So kernel default there is fine. Uh, we should have an exception here. Oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god. Maybe if we undo this one. And we move that one into here. Kernel default specified for PRR2 with type customer with type root collector. I don't know. Maybe we just do it one by one. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, we are looking at the kernel default at the moment. Where don't we export default routes to? Peers, we don't export default routes to. So kernel default. Okay. We don't export black holes. Where's our sound gone? Um, I don't know, chat. I don't know. Maybe... Maybe we do one test at a time and then we just fix all of them at once. Maybe that's the best idea here. Because I'm going to get fucking so confused with this shit. There's just so, so many of them. We will split them up soon. Um, but just to get them to work. I've just put them all in the same fucking place, right? So. Customer black hole. Customer. Own black hole. Own default. Own BGP peering, transit default, transit BGP, black hole connected, default, kernel black hole. Um, we can not export a black hole to a customer, kernel default, kernel. Originated default, originated static black hole, static default. Static depend. Okay. We're gonna do one of these across all peer types at a time. I just need to quickly grab some more to drink. I'll be right back.
Okay, chat. We will be. Give me just one second to just kill some of my emails here. Strangle them to fucking death, you know? Losing brain cells over Android USB driver. Wait, what? Android USB driver? We were... I... Mate, I'm lost. It is normally the state I'm in, right? Being completely lost and fucking... Don't know what I'm doing. Um. Oh! <laughs> so, Oxgrave Forest, what would be the status on your t t tablet at the moment? Have you managed to fix all your driver issues? <laughs> okay, we're going to try and run one test across everything. I don't know how this is going to turn out. We can try. Um, oh my god, we've got like fucking... What is 21 times 9? It's a hundred and fucking quite a few, right? I don't even know what I don't know. <laughs> oh my god. Internal PO. Root collector, root server, our client, our server, our server, our server, transit. Okay, what is the first test in our list here? Let's delete all the expected results first of all. Never tried to do it this way before, but we're going to try it now. Customer black hole is first. Okay, well, let's do customer black hole then, mate. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens with that. Ah. Okay. Let's shine in black. Let us then check for consistency issues. See what we got exceptions with and fix those. Okay, we don't have any any issues with the setups so let us check our output right why hasn't vs code what chat vs code's gone crazy on me it's not reread this directory Oh, never mind. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Never mind. Never mind. I'm just a fucking idiot. I forgot to add customer. Oh my god, the amount of time that I waste is absolutely inconceivable. Ah, let's see. Uh, 
that's a weird error to get. Anyway, it's Chon. What have I fucking done here? Peer type customer. Why? Oh my dear Jesus, right expected. Like I said, I need more sleep. That's the problem. That's the fucking problem, mate. Give me just one second. I just have to answer an email from from someone here. Give me just one second, chat. One second. your colleagues using your what what's the background music it's epidemic sound if it takes more than 15 seconds we legally allowed to leave the stream <laughs> it's probably gonna take more than 15 seconds mate it's our um, it's our company auditors. Um, they just asked me a question here. Just need to answer them something. Just give me one moment. I just really have to sort this out. Or oh, epid yeah, epidemic sound.com. It isn't well, I don't think it's free. Um the playlist is dreamy laid back music with vocals disabled. There we go, 30 day trial easy. Peasy. I think it's on I think it's on Spotify as well.
Give me just one moment. I'm nearly done. I just have to explain to someone in finance something that they don't fucking understand in something else. It's not the easiest of things to do. Almost done, chat. Fuck, man. He's probably gonna phone me after this. with a python script that's a good idea mate it's a good idea see you read over my reply here quickly
Um, Okay, this is laid out pretty fucking simply. Let's see if he comprehends what I'm trying to get at. Okay, so where were we chat? <laughs> Probably like half an hour ago, right? Um, okay, so let us do a China and a black here. I'm going to have to think of some sort of an, of an analogy on how to explain it. Because he's probably going to phone me and say, I don't fucking understand, mate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, there's nine. Nine here. So, prepending of BGP routes received from a customer that are black holes going to another customer. So, we're looking for R2. R2 is the only fucking thing that we're interested in here. We've tested out the redistribution in previous tests so we don't have to care about that we are just interested in a single prepended root which is this one over here we don't have any others it's just that one and that is a customer it's not a black hole Oh, you know why? You know why? I forgot something critical. I forgot to fix these. I forgot to fix the fucking configuration. Own black hole. Own default. Own peering. Transit default. Transit BGP. Uh, this should be black hole. This should be connected. That should be default. Kernel black hole. Kernel default. Kernel originated. Default. Originated. Static black hole. Static. Default. Static and prepend with a value okay 
Let's try that again. We're going to inch our way to getting this completed, you know. Three inches forward, five inches backwards. The way we do it, we travel in the backwards fashion on this channel, you know. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. I hope that that was not a setup issue. It was. Okay, but that's fine. We'll, we'll sort it out. I think it's because we can't export a customer black hole to another customer, right? So that's probably why we got that exception. But we'll just add it. We'll just do them one by one. There's only 21 to do. It's not that fucking difficult. So if we just do one at a time, we should eventually arrive at 21. Eventually. By adding 1 and minusing 3. Okay, so the two we cannot export a customer black hole root to is a peer and a customer, which is actually perfectly right. That is perfectly correct, mate. So we just need to copy this shit over here. And we need to say that we're expecting an exception to be raised. And this is going to be BGP customer black hole specified with PRR to a type customer makes no sense and we need to just copy that into our peer peer type thing in Bob and Majig and we say that with type peer makes no sense okay so we can't export a black hole to a peer we don't do shit like that at least as far as I know you don't do shit like that pretty fucking sure. I haven't seen one peer so far that supports sending them a black hole. Okay, let us write expected again. We then retest. We shouldn't get any exceptions. Okay, let's chown and black everything. Let's rerun the test. Without right expected, let's see if our exceptions are properly being caught. It's looking good. Perfect, they are. Okay, let's try that again. So, oh my god. So that is actually correct. Um, R1 thrown and exception for customers. So that's perfectly fine. Um, for an internal peer, right? So we are looking at R1 facing R2, which is where the roots are being exported to. And we should have one of them that's got extra prepends, which is this one over here, right? And there's only one, right? There's only one. And that should be a customer black hole. That is a slash 32. It is a black hole. It did come from a customer. So that is 100% correct. 100% correct. So next one is peer. Peer generates an exception. So we don't have data for R1. Root collector. Um, we should have the same output where we have um, a single a single root. So R1 facing R2 is this one over here. We should have a single one which is a black hole. Black hole root from a customer prepended five times. Perfect. We know that all the other routes that we have are going to be properly filtered out and everything. We we are testing those before this test. So we, the only thing that we are after is this route over here to ensure that it is there. And then after our testing is all completed and we have all the data and everything, if we do make any changes in the future to something, we'll then be able to see if any of the other routing tables are changing as well. But there's no way in which we will be able to verify every single route every single time at the moment. I mean, configuring a 
Colonel isn't that bad, Oxgrave Forest. You just have to go slowly and read the options. There's a lot of fucking options. It's absolutely fucking insane. But it isn't that hard to do, mate. I would... I, um, my suggestion from doing th that for close to 20 years is do not change 20,000 things in one go. Change one thing at a time. Verify it works. Rebuild. Test it out. Change one more thing. Verify it works. Rebuild. Test it out. Or you're going to end up, if you have any sort of an issue or so, you're going to end up trying to then figure out what fucking option is broken and shit like that. Um, hey there, Dr. Erde. The 64, the 100.64 range is the carrier nat range. It's a private range similar to like um, 192.168 or so, but it's used specifically on ISPs networks generally on 3g or um or lte between the client and the um, isp and then on the isp sides they then basically nat it um to a public ip address that's generally what those are used for but we're using them here because we aren't going to be using the private um the pro the private ranges we need something a little bit bigger than that so we are testing out up to slash sevens here although the carrier net range does not go to slash seven I think it's a slash um, slash 12 or something um, we do use slash um, sevens here it's just to ensure that if anyone for some reason decides to run this test under docker or so that it isn't going to conflict with the ip address that's assigned to the docker container at all so it shouldn't conflict anywhere hopefully it's pretty much as far as i can go to ensure uh give me a second i just need to tell my one staff member to submit a merge request Okay, yeah, so that's why we're using 100.64 here. Um, so that's the only point that we're really interested in here, that it is getting prepended and we aren't catching anything we shouldn't be catching. So root server, um, we do export... We do export black holes to a root server. We do change them first as well, but in this specific case, we do export them. And there is our customer black hole there. We got, it's a customer root. These communities over here just say to export to transit and to, and to root servers as well. Um, those are tested um those are tested actually under large community functions which is a little bit fucked up because these tests are running before that we should probably move pre-pending after large community functions we should probably uh, um, update our our um to do to do that as well just so they being run in the c correct order. Move prepending after large community functions. Okay. So when these tests off are all sorted out, we'll then swap T60 and T62. So they're in the correct order, and we will swap around prepending and large community functions. Um, because we don't want to use features of something we testing out later on i would prefer if we ran the tests in a single threaded mode 
that the first thing to fail would be the first time that that feature is actually being tested out. Reproof reflect the client, same thing pretty much, R1 facing R2, we should just have a single root which has got the AS prepended. It's a black hole and it's from the customer, which is good. Next one, we got root reflector server. It'll probably have exactly the same result, but we still have to just make sure. There are quite a few if statements for the type of peer readers, and these are two separate peer types. So, black hole, it's prepended, it's got the correct community, and it is from the customer, and that's the only one as well. Um, R server, R server, same thing. R1 facing R2. We've got a single root, hopefully, just going down a bit. Got a single root that's being prepended, that's black hole from a customer. Transit, we do export customer black holes to transits if they want us to transit providers if they want us to. So R1 facing R2, we should have a single root. Oh, we don't. See, here's a problem now. Unless I've got the wrong peer. Nope, R1 facing R2. We should be exporting customer black hole here. And we're not. Oh, we are. Wait, no, we're not. We're not. It's not being prepended, you see that? Transit provider is like a, for instance, a tier one ISP. Oh, pretty interesting. My battery bank didn't charge, took it apart and an SMD resistor has come loose from one side. Jesus Christ, Oxgraf Forest. You got some interesting issues there, mate. So transit provider is like an ISP or a tier one provider or so. It's where you buy IP transit from. IP transit is internet connectivity that you can uh, you can normally reach the entire internet from. Whereas a peering session would be internet connectivity where you can only reach that specific organization and or their clients. So for instance, you would have a peering session with someone like Amazon. You can only reach Amazon from that peering session. If you have a peering session to someone like um, to someone like Cogent, you'd be able to reach the in, um, pretty much the entire internet. My Mini stove stopped working a week ago, took it apart, still no clue what's wrong. Jesus, Oscar Forrest, you're like a fucking comedy book, mate. You got some interesting shit happening there. Okay, so we have an issue. And that is we haven't got any prepends here. And that is for our peer type transit. So the first thing we're going to do is just going to verify BGP customer black hole, it is using the correct um, test template. And there isn't anything in the test template over here that would indicate that we are going to be doing something incorrectly. So I think what we do here is we check what our config file has to verify it's been configured correctly, first of all. So let us delete um, that test result. Peer type transit and the only expected data we have and let us rerun just at one test with a minus v so bird plan test i created myself an alias here right expected oh we need v's in that don't we with a whole bunch of v's so we first verify that we have configured bird plan correctly before we start trying to find a bug that isn't there um, hey there, Slay HJ. How's it going, mate? Send away, mate. 
<laughs> on how your LED lamp works. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Did you take that apart as well? Intros to coding, unfortunately not mate. I would enjoy to do something like that if I had time, but unfortunately my time is 100% consumed for at least the next three years at the moment. <laughs> I'm terribly overworked chat. Terribly overworked man. Okay. Um, so we need to figure out where our config file is. Hey there, SlayJ. Thanks a lot for the um, for the f follow, man. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks, man. Okay, here's our configuration. At some stage, we actually need to write all our configuration files out. So if you want to see what sort of configuration we had for a specific test case or so, it'll be easy to do so. So here is R2's configuration. It's configured as a transit provider. Um, we do have prepend customer black hole set to five, which means our result is incorrect. Um, let's just quickly fucking reformat that. That's all over the place. Let's just do a chan and a black on it. This is why we use Python for our results here. So you can easily just run black on the file and it's sort of sanely formatted instead of using something like fucking yaml or so that will be all over the place um we also do sort the results by the way so they're always in the correct order okay um here is the here is the customer black hole route that we're supposed to be prepending and you can see it isn't being prepended at all so i think that is an if statement that we are missing we can actually verify that too, by the way. We can actually check what the output um, bird configuration is. So R1 facing R2, we will have the configuration down here. This is R2 over here, and we should have some sort of a prepend configuration here under redistribution. Um, it's a little bit hard to try and figure out what's going on here, but they all follow a sort of an access type. I don't know. It's sort of like an access list where we reject certain things. Um, you can see we allowing six. Oh, maybe that that's why six five double zero one six five four one two six. See, it isn't six five double zero one. I think that that's why it is, um, but that would not, that would not make sense actually. That's weird. Why is that six five double zero one though? The thing is, we are exporting it, so that's to reject a non-targeted black hole. So this one's obviously targeted in some way. Oh, it has the, um, okay, so it'll either accept a black hole specifically targeted towards 65001 or a black hole that is targeted towards our um, transit provider function or function argument, which is 65412. So we do have the 65412 added over there. Um, so I expect that is why it is being exported. It is being exported, so that is passing. But I don't see any prepending happening here, which probably means our if statement then is not being used or isn't being triggered for reasons that I probably fucked it up. So if we go down to where our prepending is done, just Make sure you have a piece of cloth ready to wipe the blood from your eyes after you try to figure out what's going on here. So we're looking for customer black hole. And you see we don't have transit in here. That's the reason why it's not being exported. Hmm. So we do export black holes to transit providers. So that should have transit in it. 
which means all of the other ones that we have are probably incorrect as well. Oh my dear Jesus, they are all incorrect. How many is five? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There's four here. Okay, so we probably just need to add, oh shit. We probably just need to add transit to these. Right, so that's own black hole, customer black hole. Um, this is static black hole. We also need to be adding into the mess of a fucking thing that we have. I mean, I was thinking about if we created like fu um, like functions for each of these or per or properties even or some sort of a constant. But the problem is it's used only five times, which is it isn't going to save us any lines of code at all. It might look a, a, a small amount better, but I don't think the saving is enough. If it was used like 10 times maybe, but just five times, do we want to replace all of our code that has got repetitions? And have more than, I mean, that one is 10. Okay, but that's slightly different. I mean, 10 we might be able to do. But still, if we replace these ones, are we then going to replace all of them? <laughs> I don't know, man. For now, we just have it fucking hard-coded. I don't know about trying to add more functions. I mean, we already add fucking how many lines of code in this file? Fucking 2.3 thousand. And we can't split that up. And we've split off the attributes. That's another fucking 700 lines. I don't know, man. I think for now we just keep it like this. Anyway, that should now fix that problem. Um, so we only change transit. So hopefully we only have to rerun the test for transit. Let us just delete the output file that we got. Let us delete that file over there and let us rerun right expected. See what we get from that. Give me just a sec, I just want to quickly check history on some network outages here. Ah, uh, it's all okay, don't worry. It's all okay. Okay, um, delete some email quick. Da -da 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 done. Um, okay, move that email to my done folder. Okay, where were we? Um, we were going to check out transit again, right? So let us chow and black everything. It should just catch one file, maybe. One file. And let us go back down to transit. So now if we go down to um to R1 facing R2. There we go. One root. It's a bl it's a black hole from a customer prepended five times. So that test is sorted out. Next test is going to be customer. So customer sets the default for black hole as well. Um, so we probably need to go over here and we probably need to find that set over here and it's going to be customer. Um, we aren't going to test if we can override it. I don't think that that is, that's just going to add fucking a hundred and whatever many test cases. I think we can assume that the override works. 
um, it's not going to increase code coverage either. So I think that it should be fine. Anyway, um, customers next, right? Expected. Let us see what that gives us. Hey there, Python HU. How's it going, mate? How you doing, man? Let's see what these look like. You can find some info on the project over here, mate. It's a bird internet routing daemon configuration tool. We are busy working on the unit tests, slowly working our way through, and through fixing them after I made some quite major changes two months ago. <laughs> Um, need to get that sorted out. Okay, so all customer routes, right? Because in terms of our documentation, we're saying, where's our documentation gone? Um, prepending, where's prepending? Prepending. Customer, BGP customer will, m m will match our customer's route routes this will set the default for all bgp customer underscore star options so we should get the customer routes and the customer black hole then as per what we said should happen so if we go to the routing tables and we go down to r1 facing r2 right um we are looking f um, we are facing a customer at the moment so any customer route that we have here it should have it should have been prepended so we can just slowly go down until we see one customer route over here and we can just select that so we can see easily if there's any others okay there isn't any there so that is a normal customer route that's been prepending prepended five times that's correct and we can why is there only one? Oh, there should only be one right we don't export black holes to other customers so that one is actually a hundred percent correct but if we go to internal now which is this one over here and we go down to r1 facing r2 um where is a customer route here over here right we should have the normal customer route over here is prepended five times plus the black hole route prepended five times. So that is correct. Let's just verify that IPv6 is the same as well. We shouldn't have any differences between v4 and v6 here, but I mean. Oh, we do actually. Oh my god, chat. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Oh wait, that's R1 facing E2. Here's R1 facing R2. I nearly had a fucking heart attack. There we go, two. Perfect. So that one is correct. The next one is going to be facing a peer, right? Is a black hole a portal for the ISP per se? No. Um, so a black hole on a router will basically mean any traffic destination um, that has a destination of a specific IP range will be routed into nowhere. It'll basically just be. Um, it'll basically just be. It'll basically just be dropped. So if you routed like 192.168.0.1 um, to a black hole or so, um, when you do a trace route or a ping, you will not end up anywhere. You, you would normally hit the ISP's edge router and the traffic would basically just stop there. Generally, a client, were, um, if they're under a t 
attack also to a specific IP, generally the client would just drop the IP that they're being attacked on. Oh my dear Jesus, Oxgrave Forest, what the fuck, mate? You've got a power supply connected to your LED lamp. Why you do such a thing, mate? Hey there, sad Trina, how's it going, mate? Thanks a lot for your f for your f follow, man. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks, man. The hell is this thing that just popped up in my fucking um, stream manager here? There's a whole bunch of fucking items and shit. I don't even know. Who cares? Okay, um, so facing a peer, right? Facing a peer, we should probably only be advertising one route. That's the customer's route, which is this one over here, and it's prepended. We don't advertise black holes to a peer. Um, route collector, we can advertise a black hole to a route collector. So we should have two here, which would be the customer's route, which is this one over here, and the customer's black hole route, which is this one over here, which is correct. And then we got route server, which should have pretty much the same result. We should have two routes as well, which is... Oh my dear Jesus, I just put a paperclip through the side of my keyboard. Okay, I'm gonna stop fiddling with fucking paper clips. Um, this one over here would also have two, but hang on a sec. Oh, there we go. One and two routes to a root server. So that's correct. Root reflector client, pretty much the same thing. We should have two, which is uh, two customer routes that have got prepending, one and two. That is good, it's, in, it's the normal route, the black hole, and route reflector server, we have got two as well, which will be one and two. Um, and then route reflector server to route reflector server, we should also have two, which will be one and two, that's Perfect, that is sorted. And transit, we do advertise black holes to a transit provider that we receive from a customer if they want us to do so. So it'll be one and two, perfect. So that's that test sorted out. That's two of 21, chat. We're nearly there. We're nearly fucking there. We're like 10% of the way. Almost. Almost 10% of the way. I lost my adapter when I moved back to my country. Oh my god, Oxgrave Forest, how? I block IPs on firewalls all the time, but I'm still confused on it. Um, like, are they good or bad? Um, so a, bl a black hole, right? If you've got a transit provider, you can advertise an IP that's on your, that you own. You can advertise that IP to your transit provider and tell them to drop the traffic to your IP. Right? So instead of you blocking the incoming traffic from your transit provider to you, they drop the traffic on their side. Generally, if you're under a DDoS attack or so, that's like maybe um, that is like maybe 100 gigabit there's no way that your firewall will be able to handle filtering that traffic out so you advertise your IP to your transit provider and say hey man fucking drop everything you don't care about the traffic well they pretty pretty much drop the traffic to your IP address so you will not receive any traffic on it at all from your transit provider there are other ways to do it this is something called rtbh which is um what the fuck does that stand for i'm not quite sure how to implement that though but that's a remotely triggered black hole 
um, it's you it's BGP used as a security tool to advertise the source of traffic that should be dropped I'm still not quite sure how to do that though unless of course what I'm talking about is RTBH I'm not sure I don't know man I haven't implemented anything there yet on our feature set we probably would yeah so RTBH is just is pretty much what we've implemented then remotely triggered black hole routing is an interesting application of BGP as a security tool within service provider networks one common use is mitigation of denial of service attacks which this article will explore um, assume a DDoS attack is launched from a public internet to the customer server at dot 100 the throughput consumed is so excessive that the attack is impacting the internal infrastructure of the client and must be blocked at the edge due to the distributed nature of the attack we must block at the edge all inbound traffic destined for the victim yeah so that's pretty much exactly what we've now implemented um, generally there's two ways in which they do that um, some some transit providers will basically have a single system or more than one system on their network that they would advertise that IP from so all the traffic would basically hit that poor system on their side um, I don't see the point in doing that the other thing which they can do is properly implement BGP where they can advertise an IP into the internal network as we we, we are able to over here and we specifically trigger that IP when we insert it into the uh, into the routing table as being a black hole so then instead of say a thousand of your edge routers routing all that traffic to a single system on your network or so each one of those thousand routers will just be dropping it so you will not incur the overhead of having to route that traffic internally and you don't need any extra s systems either you just drop it at the edge as soon as it's been received so if a client advertises a black hole to us and they only um, um, just a plain black hole or so and traffic enters on any one of our edge routers into our network for that IP it'll be dropped there and then um, they can also tell us to um, export that black hole to the providers that we have that support black holes and we can then trans um, we can then advertise that IP um, basically sort of with their perm with their permission because they have to set the attribute so they set a specific attribute or um, a specific large community they say for us to export it to like um, root servers um, and or transit providers we export it there and it will then drop even outside of our net um, even outside of our network is this an IPS um, not really no it's just plain routing simple and plain routing I'll show you over here um, so the routing table right um, we should have a black hole test here just give me a second to find it um, give me a second accept black hole so here is where we accept a black hole from a customer okay here is what the customer would advertise to us so they would advertise like a slash 31 for um, just as an example it can be a slash 32 it can be a slash 24 um, it can be any size up to a slash 24 is what we currently allow um, so they set the community as being 65535666 that is the well-known community to drop um, to drop traffic they advertise this to us you see by default we are going to be routing the traffic through to them okay 
but as soon as that root enters our routing table over here we have changed it to a black hole root right so that slash 31 that they sent to us saying please black hole all traffic we've changed it as soon as it enters um our main bgp routing table we've changed it to a to to a black hole and as soon as that then transverses into our master routing table over here it's still a black hole and when that transverses to the operating system itself where we insert it into the rib and the fib um if as soon as that transfers is there you'll check over here here we go it's a black hole that was received from bird so that means that if we ever see that ip address as as a destination ip we are just going to drop the traffic immediately and that happens at a specific point as well right so if you can just give me one second to find the diagram for that that happens within the the routing destination selection thing um if you give me a moment i'll see if i can find the diagram that i think i drew it i'm not quite sure i can't remember but there's a specific diagram that explains where that's going to happen. Um, if you just give me a moment. Um, um, it'll probably be like on one of my training, training things here. Give me just one second. I'll find it now. Is it under my book collection? yes it is actually under my book collection why the fuck would it be there i do not know okay i don't think this is drawn by me though i think i see a source of where this one came from give me a second let me see if i can open this up in firefox and then i'll display it on stream I save you mate just give me one moment mate it's pretty interesting actually maybe my documents folder why would I saved it there I don't even know okay let me just remove the oh, I'm not going to remove that fuck it I don't care okay so here is how packets flow inside of the Linux kernel itself, right? So you've got the network adapter over here. Let me just fucking remove the overlay. We got the network adapter over here. We got the ingress queue disk classification. That there is part of what you would configure with TC. Ingress Q, um, Q disk DQ is after that. Um, DQing, I don't think you really get involved with. Generally, it's classification. Well, I mean, I suppose generally classification and DQing would be on the on the ingress. Um, well, I say ingress Q disk path, but you can't really do anything about inbound traffic into your into your network at all. Next would come into the processing decision that would either be going to a bridge or it would be going to the routing process in this case it would it would drop it over here immediately so you would be um, the traffic to black hole would be inbound here and it would end up over here it's even before your firewall and everything it's before that but if there is a bridge involved it becomes a little bit more complicated because there's various other things that happen here so if there's a bridge involved and you haven't enabled and you haven't enabled um, um if you haven't enabled the nf net filter or so just give me a second
if you have it enabled NF net filter or so, it's going to skip um, pretty much mangle and nat over here, hit the bridging decision, probably go to the routing and be dropped over there. So anyway, so black holes are basically dropped pretty early on, pretty early on in any decision per um, process. In terms of what problem we are solving, we are implementing a feature to allow clients to advertise a black hole to us in order to drop traffic going to IPs that they own, which is what pretty much every decent ISP should be doing. Allow the clients to do that. Fuck, I clicked on the wrong screen. Okay. So. No problem at all, mate. No problem at all. It is pretty interesting. It's a very sort of... Um, it's a very sort of niche area to work in. BGP owned black hole. So when I have family also saying, do you do anything with computers? I say no. Because their comprehension of computers is completely is completely unrealistic. So I don't know anything about computers, mate. Go to a computer shop or something, you know. Find a professional to help you. Well, I don't do Windows either, mate. But then I do have some colleagues or so that think that they can run um, that think that they can run Linux. And then they obviously have issues. Yeah, I know, I don't know what the hell is up with that thing. It's fucked. We got Borg cubes today. Yeah, so I started out very, very, very early on saying I know nothing about computers at all. I don't do what you think I do, sort of thing. At least we got ball cubes, right? I mean, it's not that bad. Um, what are we doing here? BGP own black hole, right? And then right expected. That's the next test, right? Yes, 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 yes. Let's do it. I want to be a network developer, so I'm trying to learn about sockets. What does RN mean? Right now. Is that a good place? I mean, I mean, I don't know. Um, I suppose so. It depends which sort of area you would be in. I mean, you could probably classify network developer as either being someone that works on the networking code for an application, for a game, or a network developer, I don't know, maybe, maybe being someone that works on something a little bit more interesting. Well, I mean, I say more interesting security part hmm. security part of networking for an application because I would say that if you're doing something like 
network engineering and the security part of the actual network engineering aspect is quite different to the security of a person that is responsible for the networking in an application or so. I mean, in terms of network engineering, you would be tackling issues with people trying to forge types of things in traffic and everything, but from a routing perspective. But if it's for a program, it would be people trying to forge data, possibly, or trying to, I don't know, break your networking code or so. I don't know. And IoT stands for S and IoT stands for security. Oh my God, Oxford Forest, that's so good. Jesus. That's a good one, mate. Okay, so um, we need to do a China and Black on this, right? I don't think we did that. Maybe we did, I'm not sure. Shown and black. Okay. If we rerun this. Okay, we got an exception on peer and customer. Um, that is as expected. We don't advertise black holes to peers or customers, mate. We can probably just make sure that all of our black holes here have got the um, correct shit sorted out. So this will be BGP own black hole. Um, do we have any others? We've got BGP prepend black hole. So that'll just be black hole, right? But we don't actually test that. Oh fuck, I just thought of something, hey? This should be black hole actually. That should be black hole. But I don't think that's how it is at the moment. I think it's going to be caught on the first type of black hole because we set the defaults for all of those. Uh, um, we'll check now. Static black hole. So let's quickly check that. I think we set those all as defaults, don't we? There's black hole there. This one over here. Oh. Well, this is probably not good. Black hole in default actually need to be here as well. Um, I added these first because they're they sort of match everything. BGP, black hole. What did I say we needed to add? Just BGP and black hole, right? And default. Um, default is here. Let's just add those first in our list. Right? Um, so what we need to do is pick those out here. So that'll be default. And over here is where we got black hole. That also needs to be first. Okay. So that should generate the correct exception if you specify black hole in default, even though those options aren't used. Um, they just set defaults, but we should now get the correct exception for it. Okay, then peer, right? Peer was the other one that we had an issue with. Are we in the correct set of tests here? No, we're not. That's that that would have been very bad. 
Okay, next set is peer, and peer we have the same thing, right? We got customer black hole, we got own black hole. This is for a peer now. So this is BGP own black hole. BGP own black hole, and we have got black hole over here. This is going to be black hole and we've got kernel black hole over here which is correct and we've got static black hole over there okay 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 if we run that again those two should now be fixed um what test was that bgp own black hole Let's try and keep the previous test results. Um, then once we're done, we can rerun everything to make sure that anything we change to fix things are not going to affect the others. Also, we're going to have a moving bar here that we keep on having to retest everything. Why do people send me emails like, hang on, I hope my staff aren't actually watching this, but why do they send me emails like, my kit isn't working any longer? The fuck? Sort it out, mate. What must I have to do with that? It's like... Uh, why? I don't even know why. It's like, figure it out, mate. Why is your, your fucking kit my problem? It's not my fucking issue. Anyway. <laughs> Do it, robotic kid. Do it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'll fucking screenshot it if you don't believe me. I'm not joking. I'm... I'll, I'm gonna fucking screenshot this. I'm going to fucking screenshot this. You think I'm fucking joking, right? <laughs> I'm fucking putting it on Discord. Give me a second. Let's hope I don't get some other fucking images on my PC that I shouldn't be putting there. <laughs> well, there we go. That is literally a screenshot snipped up a bit. Okay, <clears throat> so um, we reran that set, we rechound, reblacked it, right? Um, let us. Yeah, Alpha seven seven seven. I find that comical as well, mate. 
Which test were we doing? Oh, BGP own black hole. Okay, so we don't export own black holes to customers. Um, we do export it internally though. I'm going to just need some more c coffee shortly. Um, so own black holes going to a internal system. Um, um, um. <laughs> Robotic head. <laughs> what the fuck? What is good? Oh, Jesus. Jesus, man. Where the fuck is that R1 facing R2 gone? Jesus, there's so many roots here, it's crazy. Well, Oxgrave Forest, you actually joke about that. That's probably what is going to happen, you know. That's generally the sort of result. They'll ask me something and then they just do not do anything. <clears throat> Especially in that specific case. Okay, R1 facing R2. Oh, you know something. I've actually got instructions for that even. You know, I even wrote a step by step. Give me a second. Give me a second. Where's my step by step? It's in more than one place. It is there. Right? Which is where I pretty much moved it to. Okay, so that is, um, I mean, obviously you have to have at least one and a half brain cells to figure out that you would change the, the URL, right? Then I have one more. Um, Um, which is over here. Oh, I can't actually log in there. Hang on a second. Um, give me a moment. Give me a moment. Then I got one more, which is over here. Right? It's the same sort of thing. Then I've got one more that's on our internal wiki as well it's in three places <laughs> there are too many words oh my god probably we all know people do not read instructions right you want to see how many wiki pages i've edited on our internal system give me a moment you want to be shocked. People say I do not explain things. Well, give me just one moment. Let me just enter this fucking SSO password in here. Uh, give me just one second to log in. Where is the wiki statistics, mate? Um, oh shit. That was the wrong thing to press. Stats. Wiki stats. <laughs> uh, give me a second. You want to see how much fucking information I put on our wiki, man. Check this shit. Um, where's my pictures folder going?
That's quite a couple of pages. <clears throat> if Git is on fire, contact the other guy. Yeah, that's a great idea. Anyway, R1 facing R2. Um, own black hole root. So it should be 65,031 and it should be our slash 30 something roots, right? Uh oh. That's a kernel black root, though. A black root. That's a kernel black hole. So we're not going to be prepending that one. That one needs a specific. Here we go. <clears throat> 3 1. Black hole. Prepended. Came from PGP. And I think we should only have one of those. We do. Perfect. Okay, that's internal. Um, peer, we don't advertise black hole roots to, so this should have no R1. Root collector, we can advertise black hole roots to. So this should also be just a single one that's been prepended. That is ours, that came in via BGP, it's black hold. That is fine. Um, root server we can also advertise to. So there it is over there, same one. In via BGP, it's our own, it's a black hole and it's been prepended. Um, root reflector client. Should probably be a similar to same thing as well. We should just have one of them though. We should just be one that's been prepended. There it is over there. It's what we're looking for. And there's none others that's been prepended. Perfect. And root reflect the server will probably be exactly the same as that. So have to make sure that our if statements are catching these. There it is over there. And there's none others. Let's just quickly check V6 and make sure that that one we have as well. R1 facing R2. Here we go over here. 103 black hole prepended came in via BGP black hole. Perfect. And then we got root reflector servers between each other. Should be the same thing, a single black hole root, which is this one over here, 103, black hole, invite BGP, it's our own, it's been prepended. That is sorted. Transit, we can export a black hole root to transit, so we should also have one here. There it is there, 103, prepended, black hole, it's our own, sorted. Okay, we're on to the next one, chat. Next one is going to be own default root. I just quickly need to grab some more coffee. Ah, I got a merge request, chat. I got a merge request. <clears throat> it's probably a good thing. He figured out get. Now, let's check his changes. What has he changed? Oh my dear Jesus. What the hell's going on here? What the hell? Why is all of these things showing up red? I suppose it's fine. Okay. Um, 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 how do I merge? Is it going to the right repository? Yep, it is. Does a merge request fix the kit? Uh, no. It fixes an another issue. LGTM. What does LGTM mean? <laughs> Let's get together mate. I don't know. <laughs> what does LGTM mean? Oh. Oh, never mind. 
yeah yeah that's pretty much what i did just merged it um i just need to quickly update two of our servers just give me a moment um emerged in a configuration change i just need to tell the servers to pull it and then i need to quickly grab some coffee before i start coughing up sand you know won't take long just give me a moment merge configuration and on the other one merge configuration and that should hopefully deploy the changes that he needs hopefully it's not going to crash and fail and burn and shit like that but anyway let me quickly grab a cup of coffee i will be right back just dying of thirst here man give me a few moments
Okay, chat. Wait, wait, wait. Let's check. Let me just quickly check if I've got any email here. Oh, my email box is... Well, it isn't empty, but there's no new emails. Okay. Did those server changes deploy? Yes. Sort of. Why the fuck is the one got six changes and the other's got four changes? The fuck? Well, it's changes deployed in that one. Six and four changes. That makes no sense. No sense whatsoever. But anyway, changes deployed in both. Let me just quickly reply to him that it's all sorted. Okay, we back to bird. Okay, next, right? Next, um, we've done own black hole. Next is own default. So let us quickly, what are we doing here? Let's own black hole. That should now pass, right? If we rerun this again, hopefully this passes now. My lovely milky coffee, man. Own default. Right, expected data. Well, we got setup failures, but that's fine. I suspect it's because we can't export um, default routes to some sort of a peer type or something. Probably what the reason is. Let's chan and black everything. Check which test failed. Let's check which one's failed. Um, root collector. Transit, root server, and peer. Well, that's perfectly fine. Root collector. Wait a minute. Which one here is first? Peer. Here. Where are you, Mr. Peer? Default. We should have an exception here, mate. Exception. Own. Default. Makes no sense. Then we've got root collector. Can't export a default route to a root collector, mate. Um, EGP own default. Um, and then we've got root server own default root server and we've got transit which is this one over here bam transit okay so if we delete those results default and we rerun that test we should now at least get some sort of a consistent result from it not failing the whole time you can black and chown and we can verify that everything is being properly prepended mate Okay, let's do a back and shout on that one. Ooh, shit, that was the wrong fucking command to run. Why does it say nothing? What the hell? What did I just fucking do? Ran the wrong command, that's what I did. Ah! You see here, Oxgrave Forest, as soon as I installed those fonts, I now have 
a fucking cake. I get cake, mate. Cake. It's amazing. Everyone likes cake. The cake is a lie, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Everyone says the cake is a lie. I mean, I used to play Portal as well, but it's so complicated now. <laughs> It's like fucking crazy shit, man. It's too much thinking to try and pass this, to try and pass those levels. Way too much thinking. Um, consistent results, right? Yes. Okay. Cool. So own default route so only our own default route exported to a customer which is this one over here it's received from e1 it's our own it's a default route and it's prepended we didn't incorrectly prepend anything else nope um to an internal system own default bam prepended only that one, right? Yeah. Yes. Let's just check V6. Um, V6 has got exactly the same shit as V4, but just to be on the safe side. Yes. Mate. Sorted. Okay. Um, Peer, we should get an exception for that. Yes, we don't have config for R1, that's or um, output for R1, that's correct. This fucking climate control is always pissing me off. Um, root collector, we do not export a default root to you, mate, so R1 is blank. Root server, we do not export a default root to you. R client, we can. So, own default. It's prepended. Perfect, 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 perfect. Uh, that's good to know mate and then we have got root reflect the server we should also have it prepended yep 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 perfect 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 let's do a random check of v6 random check of v6 there we go that's what we were after bam 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 awesome awesome between two root reflector servers, default. Uh, whoops, I clicked way too far down on that. Um, between two root reflector servers, there we go, it's prepended. That's what we are looking for. It's not prepended anywhere else. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, transit. Um, own default, we do not export default routes to a transit provider. That's fucking stupid to do that. Okay, that one's done. Um, which one is next? Our own routes. That should default for everything. So that should do black holes and default routes. So, oh shit, we probably need... Uh, that's not going to create an exception because... Yeah, it should be fine. Should be fine. So that's just going to be own and write expected data. Let us see what that turns up, mate. No problem, man. AFK as much as you want to. Everyone else does. It's no problem. Um, why does my coffee taste like shit? What the fuck? Maybe I didn't add enough spoons of coffee in there. That's probably what the problem is. Blech. Tastes sick. 
my coffee is sick chat it's a sick cup of coffee sick as in shit not sick as in anything else okay do we have any exceptions being raised any setup problems <laughs> because it is shit awesome so you want to tell me you a program i have a problem with games that require too much thing oh yes ox gray forest definitely mate definitely especially i i would say portal is probably the only one i have a problem with at the moment that requires too much thinking and it's thinking that i'm not used to you know you exercise your brain in certain areas and everything well whatever portal has in it mate it's too much effort way too much effort okay i mean i can figure it out pretty easily it isn't a problem there it's just the effort which it takes to do it and the part of the brain it uses is just too much just too much man um okay so all of our own roots then right so we've got our default being prepended static won't be prepended kernel won't be prepended static won't be why is it two static roots here static and originated that's why there's two roots why are we not that doesn't look right oh connected originated 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 kernel kernel static static egp that is being prepended properly so it's 103 i thought 103 was part of the oh no it's not it's not it was part of the black hole bit earlier i mean don't you find the same thing or is it just me maybe i'm just too stupid to play portal <laughs> who knows man so we should have just one root then 103 slash 24 okay so internal we should oh we should have two we should have the default and 103 where is 103 gone and 103 uh wait a minute why do we have and the black oh shit we should have three why am i going fucking blind here but we don't export black holes to a customer that that's why we only have two there okay fair enough fair enough fair enough fair enough okay so internal would be all of them so it's, it'll, it'll be probably four then right it's only three why is it only three though black hole normal says so the one zero three roots black hole normal and default right yes okay so anyway that is fine um peer we have got one zero three prepended we do not export black holes or default roots it's just the one which is correct root collector we only should have probably two which would be one zero three and a black hole which is correct let's make sure there aren't any others perfect 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 root server we should have um one zero three prepended and a black hole perfect 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 that's what we're looking for are our client we should have all of them it was difficult at times but mostly enjoyable experience i mean i like playing it but but hang on 
Which version did you play? I mean, version 1 is fine. Portal 1 is easy enough. I don't have t too much issues there. Portal 2 is a fuckfest of fucking really complicated shit. Oh my god, chat, these emails. I sent an email saying deployed. He sends me an email back saying, what's the next step? Don't know, man. Two, I have both. Might play later. More get emails. Yeah, more get emails, man. I just deleted it. <clears throat> you can figure it out. Um, R1 facing R2, R client default, and then the normal root 103 and 103 black hole. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah, man, deploy profit. I said deployed. I fucking sent an email here. I'll, I'll even show you, man. Look at, look at this. I can even copy the date and time. Well, that's probably not going to be a great idea, but yeah, I literally replied. Let me just screenshot the other one as well. I don't understand this. Why do I get these emails, man? Can't copy more of it, unfortunately. It's got the dude's name and everything. But check this shit. I don't understand. I'm at a loss for words here. And then I get an email that has got this in it. It's me, right? Am I the problem? Probably. Okay, R1 facing R2. So um, we probably already did this, but default, and we got 103, 103, right? 103. Perfect. Perfect. And that's all. Okay. Next is RR server. And we have got default and then 103, 103. Perfect, 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 perfect. Okay, next is two root reflective servers connected to each other. We got the default root. Nicely prepended. I'm Cadet Blue now. How did you do that? Well, you'd look more like fucking, is it cyan? Cyan gray. Oh, you gray. There we go. Well, uh, fuck. God, I'm slow. Jesus Christ, chat. Only thing I can think now is BGP. <laughs> You'll have to explain the gray color to me in BGP there, Ox Great Forest. I don't understand. How do I root that? <laughs> 103, 103, and nothing else. Okay. Um, next is going to be transit. Transit. We don't export default routes, but we do export our black hole. So there's our 103 route and our 103 black hole route. Perfect, so that one is sorted. Um, what's the next one? Next one is going to be 
BGP peering. Okay, so routes we receive over a peering session. Or routes which we have received over a peering session. BGP pre pen BGP peering. Um, did I have right expected? Yeah, I didn't. Fuck me. Right expected. Let's see what that looks like. I don't actually know how he did that. Oh, premium features. Well, there we go. Ask Grey Forest pays for premium features. Pay to win, mate. Give me a moment. He's a pay to winner, you know? Not that I have any issue with that, but... I mean, I also pay to win in some computer games, you know, if it makes you more, if, I mean, like for Guild Wars or so, I would pay to be level 80, just so I don't have to struggle with trying to find equipment anymore. <laughs> it makes it more enjoyable for me, you know. I'd pay to win, for sure. Well, not pay to win, but pay to enjoy the game. A game I never played. Well, it isn't a subscription and it's an MMO. And apart from the fucking jumping puzzles, Jesus Christ, if I want to ever feel a little bit... Okay, I probably can't say that on stream, but if I want to... Um safely bang my head on the wall you know i would probably try a jumping puzzle in guild wars <laughs> those things are fucking i don't know cut wrenching but then again the latest incarnation of my character on guild or so is a mesmer and they can teleport you so generally what i do before i jump between every pl every platform is i put a teleportation thing on the floor so if i fall off i can just teleport back up if i don't die you know <clears throat> <laughs> it's probably the best way to do it Yeah, I'd pay to win, for sure. I'd buy in-game tokens to buy a, probably a mount or something. So I don't have to worry about fucking doing 20,000 quests to actually get one in-game. <clears throat> you know? Just so you like, feel a little bit better about yourself definitely pay to win to do that um okay so we're not getting any exceptions so bgp peering routes so these are routes we receive from a peer either via root server or a peering session to a peering partner and we should have one here Three, three, there it is there. So that's 105. <gasps> and 107. So this one here is a peering partner, 105. And 107 is a root server. Hey, Scythe DJ. Hi, Nigel. I want to, want to play my games. It has mounts, 20,000 quests, and you can pay to win. <laughs> 
Maybe. <laughs> I mean, I don't buy silly items. It would either be a level up, so um, I would only play an MMO if you can do quests and and dungeons and everything at any level. So that sort of rules out WoW. I tried that, but when I bought a level up, <laughs> I couldn't do the fucking dungeons anymore. I kind of enjoy the dungeons quite a bit. Like Final Fantasy XIV and Guild Wars has a... It does not really have a great system for that. It has like fractals and stuff like that. It isn't as great as all the others. I'd say Final Fantasy XIV has got like the absolute most... Level based armor and weapons. Well, that is why you buy max level, right? And then you buy some in game tokens that you can spend on like the auction house. And you can buy yourself some reasonably okay -ish shit, you know? <laughs> Maybe. <clears throat> so, 105 and 107. Um. Peering. I mean, maybe I go about it all wrong. I just want to enjoy playing the game. And generally, you can't buy the end game shit from the auction house anyway. You actually have to grind for that. Doing some dungeons and everything, which is kind of why I enjoy to do them. Here's 105. 105 is prepended. That's the only one that's prepended, right? I think so. Yeah. 105 and 107. Sorted. Okay. Peer, we do not advertise BGP peering routes to appear. Oh, we actually have an exception for that. That's pretty cool. Perfectly reasonable. We do not advertise peering routes to a root collector either. That's pretty cool. Already picked up as an exception. We do not advertise it to root servers. Pretty cool. Um, RR client. We should have 105 and 107 here as well. 105, 107, perfect. Root reflect the server. We should have 105 and 107. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, root reflect the server, root reflect the server. We should have 107. 5 and 107 as well, I guess. 105. Perfect, perfect, perfect. 107. And transit, we don't advertise. Um, peering, R1 gave an exception. Next test, chat, next test. Uh, I know this is a bit painful, but. Transit default routes. Okay. So BGP transit default right expected. I mean, do you mean the level based weapons that you always have to swap out after like five um, levels or so? Because they now do absolutely shit DPS. Okay, let us uh, channel black that. We've probably got some exceptions here. Oops, probably got some exceptions with this one. Uh, 
Um, let's see. Yeah, we do. We've got fucking failures all over the place. Okay. Um, what is going on here? Let's do peer first. Peer transit default. Peer transit default. Aha. <coughs> Jesus, man. Fuck you, climate control. Peer. Um, root collector. Uh, transit default. Transit default. I mean, in general, you either kill a crazy boss that's normally an impossible task and get gear that you can't wear, you then spend time grinding devils for that gear. By the time you get to that gear, you'll find better gear. Yeah, I think that that is also a little bit fucked up. And then obviously the gear that you get then you also can't use because it's higher level than you are, right? EGP transit default. Okay, root collector. Next is root server. EGP transit default. Yeah, I suppose they're all the same in that regard. Give me just one second. Um, <laughs> our country has run out of power again. I just want to see when they're switching power off to the area I'm in. It's going to be this evening sometime. Da -da 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 -da. Wednesday. What time did they say it's starting? 10 p.m. Oh well, that fucking sucks. It's 10 p.m. Stage two. It's not this evening. It's to. It might not be tomorrow. Oh, it is tomorrow. Tomorrow evening. Oh. Fuck it. Hmm. Oh well. Stupid country running out of fucking power. Rotates area. Country that just rotates areas for electricity. What, what a joke. Yeah, man. Our electricity is fucked. As in completely. Yeah, it's completely crazy, man. It's completely crazy. And it's the worst thing, especially if I'm trying to do like bird or so, where it requires a considerable amount of time to start being productive. And then immediately then bang, out goes the fucking power and everything. It's like, fuck me, mate. Um, transit default. Oh, we fixed that, right? All root server. Next one is transit. Transit. Transit default. Here we go. Transit default. Okay. Um, we probably need to remove all of our results for that. Probably 
run so default and let's rerun that test set let's see what happens <clears throat> uh yeah I used to have a generator Each tax will be sufficient as each tax you earn to convert the profits and using Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, just give me one second. My um, my auditors just, just replied with something I was hoping they would reply with. Um, hey there, I'm Nasret Ozait. How's it going, mate? Um, I want to make a self sufficient off grid setup, but I literally have no natural resources for that to happen. I'd have to limit it so much it would not even be funny. And all I do is computers. Yeah, I mean, um, I used to have a generator in the past. Um, I used to have a generator in the past which powered a 5 kVA UPS which powered um, like some servers or so that I used to do div um, that I used to do development on and then when the power went out um, I just used to hook my computer's UPS onto the generator as well. But I don't have that bigger house anymore. I have a very small apartment, very humble abode. So I don't have a generator anymore. And UPSs are fucking expensive. Especially sometimes where the power's out for like five hours. It's not worth using a UPS, mate. Just throw your notebook out and work from that. Um, we just ran the test for transit default. So all of these systems that I work on at the, at the, the moment are remote. I don't have any servers anywhere in the um, office or anything.
Yeah, I've got the X1 X1 carbon and the X1 um, X1 yoga. So they can stay up for like 8 to 12 hours or so. It isn't mine. I did not purchase it. The company that I, that I work for unfortunately had to do that. I need processing power, mate, and I need to be able to sign things. Um, having to print things out and fucking sign it and scan shit and just takes too much of my time at the end of the day. This is why I have the yoga, which actually works very well. I mean, I I probably hand it to um, probably hand it to Lenovo that their compatibility on the Linux is amazing apart from the fingerprint reader although that I think that that is actually supported at the moment you got a MacBook oh no mate oh no it's terrible oh um just one issue with the X1 and the yoga is the latest um the the latest generation of them one needs to fuck around with the ACPI calls to change the LTE device from PCI to USB I think that that's my only issue there but I mean you could always use a dongle I don't re re really mind either way Yeah, we feel sorry for you there, Rogue Potter Kid. Okay, so these results are consistent, right? <clears throat> so, what we should have here then, mate, is... Where is our test starting? Transit defaults. So we are advertising a transit default route, which is prepended should only be the one that came from e which is 100% correct should only be that one inside here which is right transit default I haven't ever owned a, a Mac in my life no Mac or anything it's only been Linux machines Uh, transit default, that is tr transit, that's the default route, and it has been prepended 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and there's our transit as in, so that's correct. PTI peer, we do not export transit routes to a peer, so that's got no R1. Root collector, we do not export transit routes to root collector. Root server, we do not export transit routes to root server. Root reflector client, we do. So where is our... Here we go. That is sorted. Let's just check V6 on this one as well. Just to make sure. R1 facing R2. The Mac troubleshooting is annoying. What the fuck is this? What the fuck is that? How the fuck does that work? <laughs> At the end of the day, I only got it because I needed the battery for the long trips. Well, Repotikhead, the X1 is definitely what you're after, mate. Um, the entry levels do not cost that much at all. I mean, okay, I suppose that that would obviously be... Re um, be f from your perspective, but... Um, they pretty well priced in my opinion and the amount of battery life that you have out of them is absolutely insane absolutely insane i mean generally when um when i fly to other cities or so or am traveling um 
sometimes I would fly to another city for like maybe a day and then fly back. I would generally not have to charge it at all. So I leave my apartment or so, I use it at the airport, climb on the plane, I may use it on the plane for like two hours or so, <laughs> land on the other side, have a cup of coffee or so, use it there, go to a client, use it there, head back to the airport, use it at the airport, head back to the airport in my city and then head home and it would still be like 50% or so. But one tip I think on that is when you near the um, depending on the on the warranty options generally they provide a 12 month battery replacement warranty after or just say two months before the warranty expires um, you need to properly calculate how much battery life you're receiving and then put in a warranty claim and have them replace the battery before the warranty <laughs> expires. They generally do not complain at all about doing that. Especially if you have a, a next business day um, on site repair. They do not ask anything. They just basically send someone out with a new battery. They generally hand you the um, they generally hand you the battery though and expect you to do it yourself, depending on th the warranty as well. But then you have a brand new battery. Because obviously they don't last for more than 12 months. I mean, um, depending how you're using it, I suppose. But the more you drain that shit, the faster it expires, mate. I suppose what you could do, the easiest way to destroy a, a, a battery in a notebook, right? is to plug something into the USB that consumes power into the port that is on when it goes into sleep and then put it into sleep. You'll drain it down to zero. And that's gonna fuck it up like one, <laughs> like one shot. They, they do not say don't do it. So, I mean, you're using it as they say you should use it, right? Because they don't say don't do that. But if you really want to fuck the battery up, that's the way to do it. You could always experiment about two months before and see, hey, how long would my battery last if I were to do this, you know? Plug a power drawing USB device into the port that stays on in, in the hibernation mode and put it into hibernation and then drain it to zero. And it's going to get really fucked really fast. Especially after like Especially after like 10 months or so. Your battery life will go down from like 6 hours to 2 hours after a few of those. Right? Um, root reflector server. Transit default. Prepended. Fucking batteries. My poor battery. <laughs> oh, no. oh, robotic head. No, man. I mean, our new battery is so expensive, though. I mean, you can probably pick something up on eBay, even. <laughs> um, R1 facing R2. Root reflector server, we got one root. That's what we were looking for. Transit, we do not advertise transit routes to. Okay, so that test is perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect. What is next? Um transit default next is going to be transit okay transit
Okay, um, let's do a black enchant on this. One of these days I'm going to replace the 18650s in my current battery. Yeah, the thing about the 18650s as well is they have the same, I mean, almost every battery out there apart from the very expensive um, telecoms batteries or so if you if you um, draw more than is it 20 to 40 percent of their capacity you start reducing the life of them which is something that normal people don't understand so they use their batteries up until the thing is fucking zero or so and wonder why they only last about six months but if you keep it like permanently on charge it'll probably last forever <clears throat> well almost permanently on ch charge you can only use like 20 percent of it completely um completely safely before you start eating into its lifespan um, black and chown and then run this without right expected I mean for ev almost every single battery that I use or have I've pulled the specification details for, um, for that and it normally has a graph of how much of them you can use I mean like for an 18650 or so if we go with like um, Samsung 18650 technical specifications it should be like maybe a fucking I don't know data sheets the 25R for instance we should have a diagram that shows uh, well, we apparently ended up on a site that doesn't have a fucking diagram. Uh, where is a PDF? Maybe PDF? Maybe some vape shop or something will. Here we go. Maybe this one will work. There we go. Okay. We should have a diagram somewhere. Should. Generally has a diagram. Or it's in the technical specifications here. Maximum continuous discharge, 60% to 250 cycles. There should be a um, um, something in terms of... They generally have a fucking diagram here. Which shows how long they last for... At what percentages... Discharge temperatures, charge conditions, discharge conditions. Um, generally, they have a graph. Maybe it's just this specific one. It doesn't have a fucking graph on this specific page. But generally, they have a graph. I mean, especially like the lithiums. Um, so the very, very expensive ones. Um, if we check out... Um, um what is a manufacturer of that fuck man um um pylon pylon lithium telecom pdf fuck i don't know here we go the pylon tech us 3000 this is a fucking is my mouse squeaky no not really this is a fucking expensive fucking device eh? if you were to go broke you buy a few of these fucking things now but that being said their lifespan i think is 15 years with a with a warranty as well okay 10 years plus on this specific one cycles six thousand right now it should have a um it should also say how far you can discharge it discharge current working temperature shelf temperature 
design life 10 years 25 degrees there should be a diagram on here should be a diagram come on there has to be a fucking diagram here diagram or at least something that says like down to zero um no man why can't i find any fucking diagrams at the moment This one definitely has a um, definitely has a sheet that's got that's got the specifications on regarding the regarding the discharging. Okay, so that is down to twenty percent. Um, so you can discharge that battery down to 20% for more than 6,000 times over the period of 10 years and if you stay within within the I mean I don't think you could, would be able to uh, maybe you would be able to discharge it more than twice a day but if you were to stay within the 80% depth of discharge over here they generally replace the um, they generally re replace the battery but these are fucking expensive it's what these cellular providers and everything normally use they just shove a rack of those inside of their towers or so and they last forever oh um, we're not buying anything mate we just um, checking out usability of some batteries but there are ones as well i think that there's like a solar provider inside of my country that sells some that um solar battery that sells some that have a hundred percent discharge rate that is also under a a a a, 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 a warranty plan so if you check the lithium batteries that they have there's some over here uh it's not the pylon i think it it's i don't think it's a blue nova that they have it is one of the other ones it might be this one so some of these is a pdf pdf there we go hundred percent depth of discharge sounds squeaky that's weird oh it might actually be the um, it might actually be the wheel that's a bit squeaky oh well this is slightly varying details to what their site listed their site said a hundred percent this one over here says eighty percent that's weird unless i was looking at the wrong one this is a blue nova no that is a blue nova anyway but some of them are rated at a hundred percent down to zero um and they last forever man always check your battery specifications mate I think it is my mouse yeah it is it has a very slight squeak how you can hear that i've got no idea it's going squeak squeak here you know it's after a piece of a piece of fucking cheese or something okay prepend bgp transit um we did just test those out yep those look good um so it will be expected bgp transit this one over here and r1 facing r2 um we set the defaults for transit default so we should have probably two of these right yeah there's a very slight squeak man i'm terribly sorry about that i'll find some oil and oil my mouse you know um and then 106 okay so it's two routes that we should then have 
Um, internal. Um, so exporting transit routes to an internal system. Wait, 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 wait. That was for customer. Oh, that was actually quite loud. <clears throat> yeah, your ears are definitely in perfect condition. Even though I lost some hearing when I forgot to put my earplugs on when I was in the military. Oh no, mate. Oh no. Um, R1 facing R2, internal. We got one, we should have two. Mouse, be quiet. One, two, that's all that we need. Okay, perfect. Well, it is one of those expensive Corsair ones. The G fucking whatever it is I had, I had four of them. Almost every single one failed at exactly the same time. It was pretty crazy. Maybe I'll try and find some fucking oil for this thing. I don't know how you would open it up though. We'll just spray it with oil. I don't even know where the fucking bearing is or something. Must be there somewhere. Well, I was actually thinking about something like that Oxrave. Um, I do have some in my toolbox. I do have some. If it starts doing that more, I will spray it down and probably break it in the process. Okay, so we had two routes here, right? We've got default, god damn it, mouse. Default and the one route over here. Um, that's internal. For PO, we don't ex uh, we don't export transit default routes, so we don't have anything for R1. Route collector, we don't export transit route. Oh my god! Can't focus anymore. What do you mean can't focus anymore? You mean because you can hear the mouse now? <laughs> I do have a second mouse in my bag. I can swap out mice. Give me a second chat. I have a second mouse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we just need to swap out the mouse. I have exactly the same one inside of my bag here somewhere. Fucking mouse, come here, mate. It's somewhere in my bag at the bottom. I will find it. I'll grab it by the tail. Actually, it's it's the wireless mouse that one. But maybe it's in the other fucking pouch thing. Ah, ah, is that you, mouse? Where the fuck is my mouse anyway? That's weird. Hang on, chat. I have to unpack my bag quickly. Is in here somewhere. Somewhere. Ah, I found it. Okay. So we swap this one out with this other one. Like so. Oh my god, my fucking earplugs are falling out. This one actually has to have a fucking clean. Jesus Christ. Mouse, what the fuck is up with you, mate? Are these the same type? Yeah, they are, they're fine. Okay. Okay, let's plug this one in. Now, has it been programmed is the other thing, because I've got profiles on my mouse. Yeah, I did program it. Okay, so that one has to go in for a service. We shall shower it in an equivalent of WD-40. <laughs> no, I mean, I won't fall into it. Look at the little shit on Discord. What? Oh my god, Oxgrave Forest. How do you have all these problems with things, mate? I don't quite understand. 
these mice are exactly the same but it feels different anyway anyway it's now running across the screen again so it's fine falling into the bag my bag's not that big it's sort of a reasonable backpack size you know Okay, um, prepay and BGP transit. So transit routes we don't advertise to root servers. Route reflect a client. We do advertise transit routes there. But this one actually feels a lot softer. So that one, yeah, it definitely needs oil. If he needs well. I normally break everything in terms of software. If you were to put us together, that would probably be the absolute worst thing to do. Hardware and software would then break. Oh, uh, people don't use me for QA testing. If it's a piece of software, it'll fail in terrible, horrible ways. Um. <laughs> Robotic head, what you need, mate, is unit testing. That's what you need. Okay, transit. Um, root reflector client, right? We got default. Fortunately, I don't think this mouse I can unlock the wheel to be just rolling itself. It would be pretty cool. I could do that with my other mice. Anyway, um, default, and we are looking then for um, transit, one more transit route over here, which has been prepended, which is that one over there. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, route reflector server, we've got R1 facing R2, we've got the prepending being done there, and we've got prepending being done over here. And let's just quickly verify V6 as well, just to make sure that that is still okay. One. And two. Perfect. Yeah, I have the G... Is it, it... I don't know if it is a G502, I'm not sure. So I had four of these fucking things. G502. Was it a G9 or something? No, it's not that one. Um, G90... 903 maybe? Not a 903, 901. Is no G901. Fuck. Logitech mice. Fuck. Um, yes, G700S. That's it, mate. That's a G700S, but I had four and they all failed within maybe about 60 days of each other or so. Every single one just had issues. Hang on, does my me section have the 700S still there? Oh, I do have a 700S. It's on my Windows machine, I think. I can't afford another one of these Corsair ones, unfortunately. <laughs> They're a little bit expensive. Um, so that still probably has the 700S on it. Um, so we're looking for 106. And our default route, which we had there somewhere. Default route. There we go. Perfect. Um, 
and then root reflector server to root reflector server. Let's check here. We got our prepending, and we've got our prepending down here. Perfect. Let's sort it out. I have a Microsoft mouse. Robotic head, mate. I mean, they are very cost effective, right? I mean, the um, the Microsoft keyboards or so especially are really, really cheap. It's absolutely insane. Especially wholesale. If you buy that shit wholesale, I mean, for the price of a Logitech keyboard or so, the other day, um, the Logitech keyboards were like maybe... If I were to just do a rough conversion into US dollars or so, it was maybe about five dollars for a for a Logitech keyboard, and the Microsoft keyboards were maybe two dollars or so from the importers here. It was absolutely insane. I bought about twenty of them or so. So if staff ever have thirty keyboards, it's like throw it out, mate, pull out a new one. It's not even worth you spending time to clean it. Just replace it. <laughs> man creates more electronic waste than man is supposed to. No six. Okay, that one's sorted out. So this one over here is an exception, which means we don't have our one, so that's good. Next is going to be um, BGP. So that's every single BGP route, I guess. Right expected. Oh, hectic. <laughs> Soldiering every key in place. Cool beans, mate. Have a good one there, Rob. Have a good one there, mate. Stay safe, man. Okay, prepare BGP. And we can chow and black this shit. I love your accent. <laughs> Great man, thanks. <laughs> oh my dear Jesus. I hate my accent. It, it isn't as bad as other South Africans. I mean, some South Africans is a fucking strong accent, mate. It's like... The Dutch really shines through. Me, I'd say I'm more on the light-handed side. I don't speak to... I, actually, I don't normally speak to any South Africans that have strong accents. They're all English. Um, or they aren't even from South Africa. I don't speak to anyone normally locally. Yeah, um, it's generally because I normally speak to people from EU and US. And the more you speak to people from another country or so, the the more of their accents you start like um, adapting to, I would say. Yeah, the only reason why I probably slip on some of the words is because I can't pronounce R's very well. <laughs> So that's the only way I can say R without stuttering or so. Especially R. R is a very tough word, you know. Now I don't really care about my accent. But it is pretty hard to find like um like international um work or so if you do not sound 
um, if you do not sound b British or American. I must say that people don't normally trust you if they um, phone you and say, hey, can you help me with this sort of thing? I mean, generally, um, um, like some of our software partners or so that use us to figure out issues with their, with their clients, if the client phoned us and heard that I had a strong South African accent, there's no way at all that they would um, that they would actually take you seriously. It's just unfortunately how it is. People generally trust people. <laughs> you what, mate? <laughs> you what, mate? Yeah, so. Okay, the next thing we're doing is, uh, oh, we were actually doing this test, right? Prepend BGP. So we need to check if we are getting consistent results and no setup failures. Yeah, you can't blame them at all. I mean, I would be the same if I spoke to someone that did not sound like they're from, um, I don't know if I should say a reputable EU country, but a country that I generally have dealt with in the past and found that there aren't very many scammers there. Um, I would probably feel a lot better or so if I knew the country was like reputable. Um, there are some countries out there that are really bad, like yeah <laughs> we shall not mention any names or i shall not mention any names i mean you guys can mention anything you want but i'm not going to agree or disagree to any um so those are consistent right <laughs> yeah we all know what we're speaking about right 419 scams come from uh, originally came from a certain country we get Microsoft emails from generally a specific country or countries. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck would happen if a bank in Sc in if if a bank in Scotland or so phoned me up and said, "Hey, can you can you help me with our virtual machines?" And I replied in an accent from like Microsoft support service. They would just put down the fucking phone immediately. I mean, even my accent as it is, is generally a little bit of a push for them to like think that I'm serious. Why don't you use VS Codium? Because of pylons, mate. Pylons has a strict feature that even though it makes me bang my head on the wall, desk, floor, ceiling, and then cry out in tears every few days, Pylons is amazing at pointing out issues in your code. And it picks up things like, like my pi um, isn't able to for instance i can actually show you an example of that i just need to remember where i am and what i'm doing at the moment so pure type customer prepaid bgp um there is a bit of code we have here that pylons find an issue with which is this and it's technically correct so it says that the type of peer um, prepaid type is unknown and that isn't picked up by MyPy strict. So I enjoy to see um, issues like, like, like we have over here, because generally if you use strong typing and you have a typing issue like this one here, it can probably point to an issue with your code. So pylons to me makes me more productive and it isn't available in any of the freely distributable versions of VS Code. Also, I would definitely be using an, a freely distributable version of it. 
Okay. Um, Prepaint BGP should be prepainting everything. Right? So we got R1 facing R2. Where did our music go though? What the hell? Ah, oh, we need to switch to the next playlist, mate. However much I hate Microsoft and I hate using proprietary products or or non freely distributable and pro proprietary products or so. The benefit of VS Code to me is just too great. Hey there, StormFox84. How's it going, mate? Thanks a lot for the follow, man. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks, mate. So R1 facing R2. Everything should be. Everything that's BGP should be prepended. So it's not going to prepend BGP originations because those originated on the system, they were not BGP routes that we received. Kernel the same, static the same, connected routes the same, originated, 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 kernel, kernel, static, static. Um, that one came from BGP, that one from BGP, that one from BGP, perfect. So that is correct. Internal peer type, so we're exporting to an internal system. We should have pretty much the same thing. So everything which hasn't got prepends shouldn't be received via BGP. Right. Right. All of those are static connected. That's BGP, so pretty much I think everything from here down is via BGP, right? Yep, perfect. Next is peer. Um, uh oh, R1 facing R2. We've got no prepends chat. There's no prepends at all. Nothing. Oh, there are some. Oh, wait, fuck, shit, damn it. That's connected. That's the originated, originated, originated. Kernel, kernel, static, static. I was panicking for absolutely no reason at all. That's via BGP, that's via BGP. Perfect. Next peer type is root collector. And there we have got connected, originated, 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 kernel, 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 static, 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 BGP, which is prepended, BGP, which is prepended, 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 perfect. Next is root server, should be pretty much exactly the same as root collector. Um, that isn't a port, um, that is a community mate, I'll show you now, um, R1 facing R2, we've got connected, originated, just give me one moment, I'll find one more here, originated, originated, kernel, 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 static, 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 um, this over here is the AS path. So this is generally the path um, in terms of which providers the the route itself has 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 passed through. So generally, the AS path is used to calculate how far that specific route is from you. So if we had five five AS numbers in the AS path over here, we could assume that it's five ISPs away. But what you can also do is um, is inflate the, the number of AS path entries by just prepending your AS path more than once to deprioritize that specific route that you're advertising. So generally, when you advertise the route to an internet exchange, you would advertise it with zero pre-pre-p 
pending where a peer on the internet exchange would receive just one, right? And you would advertise it to your transit providers with anywhere from one to say, for instance, like five or so, which would deprioritize traffic coming to you from your transit providers that are generally very expensive. And it would prioritize traffic coming from the internet exchange because you only one you because you only have one item in your AS path field and they would think that it's closer over the internet exchange than it is over your transit provider. Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Oh my god. So messing around with the AS path um, by prepending various numbers of your own ASN is generally the way in which you would prioritize and deprioritize traffic inbound to your network from the perspective of your peer and your peer being either a transit provider, internet exchange or a peering partner. So what we do is something that maybe some might frown against but whenever we have a route if we've got two cities um, city A and city B if we have a route that originates from city A and we've got a peering partner in city B as soon as that route transitions from city A to city B we automatically add a um, add a one times prepending which means the traffic would enter our network from the partners network wherever their network is closest to the destination rather than being our network closest to the destination we might change that in future i'm not quite sure we used to do that in the past or so because transit between a and b was extremely expensive um, but now we've got quite a substantial amount of capacity that we don't really have to worry at all um, but yeah when a route crosses between between city a and b we generally are pre pending at times one Perfect hello routine, polite greeting, name, re relevant personal link, manage expectations. Interesting, mate. Give me just one second. I just have to thank my auditing team that they have answered my questions quite appropriately. Okay, perfect. Okay, where where were we? We were on um, root server, right? Prepend BGP, and we had um, we don't advertise a default root to root server, right? So we just have our normal BGP root over here, over here, over here, and over here. Let's just quickly verify that again. So that's static, 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 static kernel, kernel originate 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 direct okay perfect root reflector client okay what do we have here mate bgp bgp you see over here um talk to her day we have pretty much faked a default route being received from a transit provider over here there is a transit providers asn 
So we've added one, two, three, four, five to deprioritize it. Now you can see which one of these has been um, has been selected as the best path as well. So if we go down, well, you probably can't because these aren't BGP routes at the moment. Hmm. Never mind. Um, so if they were all BGP routes and we didn't have any AS path fields over here, which we don't. Um, and there were PGP routes, it would have shown that one of these two would have been the best path route. And it would have been the one with the, with the lowest IP. I think it is, if I'm correct or not. Well, actually the preference is first, right? And that's preference 930 and 945. So I think it would have been the 945 one would have been selected as the best path to that destination. There's an entire BGP um, best path selection algorithm that should be used. Um, some providers do some pretty crazy fucking shit with that stuff, but... Um, so BGP, BGP, originate, kernel, static, direct, originate, 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 kernel, 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 static, static, static bgp is prepended bgp 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 and bgp perfect um root reflect the server let's just make sure that these are also correct um default is bgp that is bgp is being prepended that is the originate kernel static direct originate 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 kernel 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 static 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 uh bgp is being prepended bgp 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 perfect next is our server our server it's going to be exactly the same though uh, well we can't assume that can we um bgp bgp static static or st static kernel static direct originate 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 kernel 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 static 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 bgp 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 perfect Ah, transit, last one, chat, last one. I'm going to need some more coffee pretty soon. Do you live in the US because we might not have transit systems at least? I haven't heard of them until this channel. You definitely do have transit providers there, mate. Some of the, some of the biggest ones in the world. I can actually show you which ones you have. Or I can show you the, the ones that... Um, that you might have heard of before. Give me a second. Um, where's our free transit ASNs? Um, that would be in our constants, right? Constants? No, it is in our BGP, BGP fucking shit here somewhere. Where the hell is that? BGP functions? This can't be in our functions. Is it in here? Here we go. Here is the generally these are the um, are the companies that are um, generally are tier one providers, which means they do not buy transit at all. So you got you got Cogent. Um, you had Q West, but Hurricane Electric now carries Q West. You had UUNet, Sprint, Telia, NTNT, GTNT, um, Touch Telecom, Level 3, PCCW, Level 3 again, Centrelink or Savas, ChinaNet, Orange Open Transit, Tata Communications, Zayo, Seabone or Telecom Italia, and Liberty Global and AT&T. 
So they do not buy transit. I think so. Um, I th I think so, Oxgray. Yeah, well, Cogent is in the US or came from the US, I think. They're a global, so a global transit provider would generally have a network which looks like this. This is generally what you would call a transit provider. <laughs> Let me show you, mate. You want to check their network out? This is what a transit provider normally looks like. Where can we get an enlarged map? There we go. It's worldwide, generally. But, there's always a but, right? Cogent, at least in South Africa over here, has got pretty fucking shit internet access. It's cheap, but it's pretty fucking shit. They've got no, re um, they've got absolutely no redundancy at all. They've just got a single path that comes via the east coast i think i think it's actually the west coast or so i may be wrong it might be the east but i think it's via the west um and does and should that link go down you're fucked they don't have two links yet it's the same as harry kane as well um actually crazy it might be 10g I can't remember. I um, I had a a acquaintance of mine that was very well versed with what they pay for, and I'm pretty sure it was either them or someone else that only had Tenji, even though they were a global carrier. It was pretty crazy. I would have thought at least have some redundancy, mate. But no, one link is more than enough because they want to try and offer the cheapest fucking internet access. Uh, no, definitely not antennas, but that's generally fiber. Well, it's always fiber. So they have it 10G between South Africa and um, a 10G layer 2 circuit generally or they may be using some other confoculated um fucking 1800s um um fucking optical termination interface type thing like fucking um um what are those old old fiber packet format things called um sonnet or something as weird as that Sonnet ATM. Generally, it's a layer two. No, I'm um, Sonnet or um, ATM. So Sonnet is a packet format. I'm pretty sure that majority of the undersea cable systems use Sonnet. I might be wrong. I don't know. I don't work at that scale. Um, is it Sonnet? Um, fiber. Or fiber, fuck. Um, maybe one N. Is there a wiki? Ah, there we go. Synchronous optical networking. Or SDH. I suppose that these two are probably similarish, you know. So generally, it's racks and racks of extremely expensive shit um oxgray yes they generally do support jumbo frames in some shape or form no it isn't jumbo frames as we know it mate it's sdh and sonnet it's a um it's some sort of an optical packet encapsulation thing and it's generally the STM speeds that you have. 
Um, so if you go to undersea cable company, um, you would purchase an STM one or a fucking I don't know STM one or what sizes are there, or even an OC one, OC three which is the same as the STM1 OC48 that's the same as the STM16 and then you receive like a dedicated sort of um, a dedicated sort of speed from point A to point B based on I think wavelength reservation or something crazy but yeah um, these sort of frames are used on very 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 expensive pieces of shit like this over here like if you check the cable system um i've actually been to a, to one of the cable landing stations that is a uh, about 30 kilometers up the road i've been there a few times it's the um it's the um sat 3 south africa cable landing station i don't know how many photos they have uh, of it on the internet Probably not very many. Um, not very many at all. They got pretty high security there. Um, so there's unfortunately no real photos of what's inside. It looks something like this though. So it's absolutely racks and racks and racks of optical hardware. And they take in like, I think it's like four fiber, four fiber strands or so and they split that off um they split that off um i think that they they've got a splitter or so that was designed by um, alcatel that splits off all the different light spectrums and then from there they split that then off even more there's all kinds of crazy um hardware that they use but it's fucking expensive hardware it isn't like a few thousand or a few million it's a few tens of million it's expensive stuff that they use can't even remember how we got onto that topic though oh um yeah so i think that um cogent only has a well they do only have a single path out of south africa that i think is pretty fucked up if they had more i would probably be be using them as a transit provider their pricing is very attractive, but they got absolutely no no redundancy at all. I would rather pay a company that's got redundancy that charges twice the price than pay them half the price with absolutely nothing. And we generally have got four inbound transit links, or actually six inbound transit um, six inbound transit links into our network at the moment because we provide a hundred percent uptime guarantee on all the internet access that we provide i don't see it any other way i mean if your isp can't provide you a hundred percent enterprise service they shouldn't be calling themselves an isp it isn't that hard to do they just want to rape you well okay that was very much the wrong word to say they very much want to screw you out of all of your money and make as much profits as they can that's generally how isps work and take it from someone that owns one isps want to screw you out of everything you have and provide your shitty service at the end of the day using the cheapest hardware that's how they operate man Which is why they're so fucking pr um, profitable. Pay 50% of the cost for no redundancy versus 100% for redundancy versus 0% for your own neighbor's internet. The choice is yours. Well, there we go. I mean, if you've got two neighbors and they're on different providers, it's a possibility that you might then have 100% redundancy if one goes down, right? Just switch between your neighbor's internet access. <laughs> R1 facing R2. What are we doing here? Um, didn't we just do this? I think we did. We just did BGP, right? So the next one in the test is going to be black holes. So we need to rerun our test for black holes. Prepend black hole. 
right expected. I mean, just one second chat. I just need to. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Um, let us China Black. Well, Turkers, um, I do revolve around a pretty specific area. I don't know if you can expect them to tell you everything. Um, that's one of my problems with the courses and everything that people t t teach these days. There's just so many things out there. I mean, like 20 years ago or so, there was almost n um, there was almost n nothing at all. Now there's like fucking areas left, right, center, up, down, diagonally, and everything, man. There's c courses on everything now. Um, we're looking at prepending black holes, right? So let's do a chown and a black. And the reason why I'm pretty much writing the software I am now is because we've got clients that have probably got a combined staff total of maybe closing on five to ten thousand people, and not one of them is able. Well, in this very specific area that I'm involved in, they aren't able to create a piece of software like I am at the moment. So that's why they pay me to do this. So, I mean, don't really expect not knowing anything I'm speaking parts or doing or so to be a sign that your, that your class is absolutely useless or something. It is a very specific area. And it's generally things that people don't normally see. Like, I mean, people don't normally know how the internet goes from the ISP, um, from the ISP and out from there to the actual internet. Generally, if you work for an ISP on the networking side, you'd be setting up routers and everything. You don't generally get too involved with, I don't know, um with how things are with how things working behind the scenes i don't know if you're drawn mate i'm um, generally um if you work for someone as long as you're honest about what you know and what you can do and achieve um quite a few companies provide um provide um provide training on what they're doing I try, mate. Um, I try my best to explain things. I mean, if you guys have anything you do not understand, I do not mind at all explaining it the best that I can, if it's a field that I'm well versed in. Um, yes, things I know absolutely nothing about, like React. I know that there's hooks, I know that there's components. Apart from that, I don't know shit, man. And I know that it can use JavaScript or TypeScript. <laughs> okay, um, we just wanted to see if we have any exceptions here. I just quickly need to grab something to drink shortly. Um, I will not be long. Let me just quickly run this test. Um, did not raise an exception. Okay, so we just have to fix these then. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly grab something to drink. I will be right back. I don't understand why the fucking USB networking device isn't being created. Uh, 
Are you using OTG, Ox Grey? <laughs> I will leave you to think about what a bad person you are until I get back. <laughs> oh, okay, so it isn't OTG. Ah, uh, so how, what, how, you, uh, USB networking device, how are you doing networking then over USB if it isn't OTG? Do you have like a USB 3 to 1G dongle? <laughs> Turn it on and off again. <laughs> Be careful. Ox Grave Forest just might throw a fit. Networking over the But hang on, how do you can how do you connect it from point A to point B? Don't you need OTG to do that? I haven't ever tried to 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 um, network over USB. Oh, a special cable, right? Isn't there then like a converter inside of it from USB to like Ethernet? No, man, you can't be serious. And that works between two PCs. Nah, uh uh. Uh uh. Screenshots. I don't. I, 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 I can't comprehend how that's possible. But I'm obviously wrong. I haven't ever tried that before. Are you sure your tablet isn't in OTG mode or something, mate? I'm definitely not going to try that out, but... Hang on, so you connect a notebook with like a mail to a notebook that's like a mail as well? Or is it a special cable that you're using? Is it just a normal USB cable? A normal mail to mail USB cable. Without anything special. No, I can't understand that. I can't understand how, um, I, 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 I don't understand how that's possible. <laughs> it doesn't compute. I can't comprehend it. Um, what is the USB IDs that show up? I mean, if you do a LSU USB. What the fuck? I still can't comprehend it. You would have to at some stage show me screenshots and photos of, of this setup you have. I have mail to mail USB cables, but there's no way I'd ever plug it into two PCs. I thought that they were active powered with 5 volt or something. 5 volt 2 amp or 5 volt 500 milliamp. And if you connected one to the other one, something very bad would happen. I didn't know that they can like auto sense that there's voltage on the other side and just not do anything with that. That's why I think it would be scary. I mean, I've used OTG before. I do have a Raspberry Pi something small thingamajiggy, which is somewhere in my fucking drawer, or maybe it's at home. I do have an, oh, yeah, here we go. I do have a small Raspberry Pi that has an OTG on the side. 
this is a pi like one or something i'm not sure that works fine oh hang on hang on that is otg mate isn't it Yes, from Wikipedia. Use of USB OTG allows devices to switch back and forth between the roles of host and device. So yes, you do have a normal USB cable, but the device you're connecting to has OTG. That's why I can switch between host and device. You can't plug two devices into each other. Or two hosts into each other. It just does not work. Then again, I might be wrong. But that needs special hardware support on either side. But anyway, I'm just going to quickly grab a... Um, I'm just going to quickly grab a cup of coffee and I'll be right back. Give me a few moments, chat.
Okay, I'm back. Let's see chat, where were we? Let's quickly check if I got any urgent emails. Uh, doesn't look like it. Anything in my spam box? Uh, not really. Anything in other departments that people are not handling? One item I need to do tomorrow. Uh, what is this? Almost done. Give me just one second, chat. See you quickly. Check if there's anything urgent here. Um, or if somehow a customer's mail has landed inside of our ticket system spam box, which would be not good. Okay. Everything looks okay. Let's continue. Let's see. <laughs> Clue by four, yeah. <laughs> Good <toi. laughs> Okay, peer type customer. Um, we are pre-pending black hole roots. We don't export black hole roots to customers, so we don't have anything for R1, so that's fine. Internal system. This should be all black hole roots, right? Including static, including kernel. So this is BGP. This is a default route though. We don't want to check that. We don't want to check that. We just have to make sure that there's only... That's a black hole. Black hole, kernel root, perfect. Um... That's a slash 24 black hole? What the fuck was I doing there? I suppose that's fine though. Slash 24 black hole. Static. That's good. That's what we're expecting. Slash 32 client black hole. Perfect. That's what we were expecting. Um, slash 32. Why is it two slash 32 client black holes? Oh, that's not a client black hole. That's our own black hole. Okay, that's fine. Um, slash 32 client black hole is being prepended. Perfect. Um, we're looking for things with 666 in the name. <laughs> or in the um, in the large community list. Let's just make sure that um, IPv6 has got the same result. Okay, let's just highlight 666. Um, black hole, black hole, black hole, we specifically looking for the AS path, black hole, it has to have five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so internal is fine. Peer, we don't export uh, black holes to peers, so R1 is blank. Um, actually, we've got an exception here. Uh, we got exceptions that are not properly picked up, so we'll sort that out just now. Give me one second chat.
I'm back. Don't worry, don't panic. There's someone banging on my door. Okay, let's see. Let us see. Um, where were we? Um, Pierre, we don't export, um, so we got an exception. Root collector, we do export black holes. <gasps> Why do we have an exception for that? Uh oh. Uh oh. It's in our list though. Now that's weird. That is very weird. Uh, root collector's broken. Root server's probably also broken. Root server's broken. Uh, our client. Um, Hmm, our client, okay. Um, let us check our client and see that. We can then do these three. These three seem to be expecting an exception but not receiving it. So that should be easy to fix. Um, our client, all black holes, right? So anything that is a black hole, one, two, three, four, perfect. Um, can we just put this, maybe if we put control F, would that highlight it over here? Yes, that looks a lot better. That looks a lot better. One, two, three, four. Perfect. And transit, we do export black holes, and transit's also got an error as well, right? Yeah, okay. So we did check transit. Um, that is prepend black hole, right? Prepend black hole, it's this one over here. You don't get an exception from that, mate. Um, root collector and root server. Root server, black hole. We don't get an exception from there and root collector we don't get an exception okay let's rerun that it's china black and then let us rerun with right expected again and see what we get That was fast, faster than I expected. Uh, hang on a second. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Let's try to black everything. Okay, and let us check if we've got any issues now. I think the I think the most important thing for anyone to ever learn is something like TCP dump or even Wireshark, but TCP dump probably the first thing, and then and then Wireshark after it. If you've ever got a networking issue, fucking TCP dump it, write it out to file, Wireshark it, and see what the fuck's up. Most important thing can use that to solve fucking BGP issues if you want to see what a host is advertising you can use it to solve fucking voice of IP issues everything except something SSL based but if you've got access to the certificate of the server you can then decode that as well so TCP dump is generally the command line sort of version of it you can do things like dump the 
packets into a file from a server or so. Generally on our routers we usually use TCP dump for layer 2 and layer 3 to see what the fuck is happening. Because the client will say that, hey man, um, they have no internet access. So you would TCP dump the interface, see if they first have the correct VLAN configured on their side or see if the um, fiber providers that we use are actually handing off the traffic to us, which sometimes something goes terribly wrong on their side and everything goes to hell in a shit basket. And then trying to see what the fuck is happening. So a funny thing as well, there's one com or one, um, it used to be the monopoly telecommunications provider in the country that I'm in. Um, they're now the incumbent, but their pricing is pretty reasonable. Their support staff are pretty amazing. But only if you can prove that there's an issue on their side. But in terms of having a new service provisioned, there's only been two cases in 22 years that they've actually configured the service correctly the first time. Two cases in 22 years, mate. And we got a lot of services with them like insane amount of services but only two in 22 years was actually configured correctly and every single time that a service isn't configured correctly we we basically need to tcp dump the trunk interface that comes into us and to figure out what fucking vlan they've configured on their side so we configure the correct vlan on our side um, we send traffic over it and then we see what replies we receive and the reply we receive can be either with no VLAN tag at all, it can be tagged twice, um, we might not even receive anything, we might only receive traffic in a single direction, it's fucking crazy. Um, Oxgrade, don't you have to switch the, the, the mode of the controller into OTG mode? I'm pretty sure on the one Pi that I showed you earlier, on that device there is a setting in the, um, in that hardware file thing, um, that ARM reads or the kernel reads or something, isn't the hardware table? And that tells the device to turn OTG on and to act as a um, as a device instead of a host. I'm pretty sure that it's on the Pi like that. Let me quickly check. Um, I think it's a Pi 1 or something. Isn't it a Pi 1? I don't even know what fucking Pi that is. Rewriting in Rust, um, unfortunately, unfortunately not CNE. Pi Zero, there we go. Thanks, mate. I got a very bad memory. Just bear with me with that. Here we go. Raspberry Pi Zero OTG mode. So there's something you generally change in um, boot config. There we go. I think you generally change that there on the Pi Zero at least. Without having the DWC2 overlay, whatever the fuck that thing is, um, it's in, it is in host mode. And with that, it changes it to device mode, and then you can use all of these things over here. So what I actually did with the Pi Zero is I created a, um, 
um, I created a hardware attached storage device that basically mounts a HTTP address. So you can plug the Pi Zero into a server or into a system and it forwards the ISO over the internet to the system itself without having to have the ISO um, on, the on the device at all. It's pretty cool. You can do some crazy things like that. So it basically uses, I think it is, um, I think it is the Quemu M, um, NDB or something where you can, um, where you can open a HTTP URL. It's pretty amazing. That's why I got the Pi Zero. I have a security question. If I port forward 22 to a single IP and I've disabled the default account from being logged into and the account has a unique password, am I safe to leave the server running? <laughs> Probably not. I mean, even if, yeah, um, even if you use a different port or so, they will easily find which port you're running SSH on. It'll probably take about between 7 and 30 days before you've been scanned and they picked up the port that SSH is on. But if you disable the password authentication, as Siuni says, and only have the key authentication, you should be a little bit yeah it's definitely security through obscurity um but if you enable um key based ssh authentication you should be less um you should be less likely um that someone would have access to your s system doing that but then again, um, I've got some pretty large systems that have to have SSH open, albeit on a port that is also randomized. Well, I say randomized. It was randomized when the system was installed and it receives thousands of connections per second. And majority of the time, I mean, it is impossible to, to, to um, log in to the system. Yeah, I failed to buy in maybe an idea as well. But if you only allow your your own IP to connect to your um to your system or so that should be fine. You can then have SSH open on 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 port twenty two. But the best way is to only allow a specific IP range to access it. What we basically have on our systems is the SSH port is by default closed. We use a piece of um, a piece of software that connects to our our management system. The management system is connected to by the server. So the server connects to the management system. Our software connects to the management system as well. When you request SSH access, our software contacts the management system that tells the server that's connected to it to open a a um, to um, open an SSH port, but only to your IP. So it's like a triangle. You connect to the management system, say please open the server for connections with SSH. Um, the server is polling the management system for fucking things to do. It opens the port for SSH in the firewall to your IP and then you can SSH into it. And we, and we use SSH keys that are deployed via LDAP as well for that purpose. It's the most secure way I found, but then again, um, people are able to compromise almost anything these days, right?
But is this it? Um, but um, SSH key authentication is probably your best bet, as everyone says. At some stage, we need to rewrite the management system as well. It needs to be better than it is right now. And then everyone will be able to use it. Because that thing is pretty cool, I must say. It's pretty fucking cool, mate. Um, so we just reran this for transit, root collector, and root server, right? Prepend black hole. Prepend black hole. We do advertise black holes to root collectors, so we should have all of these black holes with prepending. One, two, three, four. That's perfect. And root server. We should now have um one, two, three, four. That's perfect. And transit. We should now have as well. Hopefully. Um. One, two, three, four. Perfect. Okay. That's that test sorted out. Let's check the next one. What command did I just run to delete that shit? I didn't run any command to delete it. Anyway, that's fine. Um, Prepend black hole. What's next? Prepend connected. Oh my god. Chat, we're nearly there, man. Our goal today is to finish these, although I'm a little bit skeptical. I'm a little bit skeptical we're going to get through this. So this turned out to be a little bit longer than I thought it would be. Connected, okay. Oh, definitely n I'm completely not unnoticed mate there's things on the internet that are scanning everything all the fucking time it is crazy absolutely crazy some of the systems that we have we can't even we can't even log the packet drops anymore it's just too much in the logs especially hosting um, if you're doing hosting behind things like um, things like reverse proxies or so for like thousands of I mean I would not say popular sites but but thousands of websites or so oh I tell you the number of traffic probes you receive is absolutely insane I've developed muscle memory to click the X on the tab, even if I want to switch to them. I am disappointed in myself. <laughs> oh my god, Ox Grey. Generally, I've got a similar issue sometimes. Sometimes I just automatically click the X and it's like, oh fuck, what have I just done? That was important. It's like I'm filling out my income tax return or so and this thing pops up saying something about fucking flash and I click X and it, the entire thing just closes because our revenue service sucks ass. Or used to. I mean, they've changed everything to HTML5 now, but still. What does Control shift t do? Explain yourself, mate. Oh, well, it would be great if opening the last closed tab actually restored the state exactly as it was before. But if it's a pop-up window that came from the site itself, you're pretty much fucked. Pretty much fucked, mate. You close something important. Yeah, but if there's like JavaScript or so that is running that pops up a window and you close it, you're fucked, mate. 
There's not much you can do about that. Not much you can do about that. Yeah, I've done the same thing, man. Also, sometimes do you find that you click by mistake or so? So you'll have your hand on the mouse and you'll be doing something and suddenly your finger just clicks. Or is that just me? It happens to me way too often where I'm like reading something and I will see... I've just fucking clicked by mistake. What the fuck have I done? Why did I do that? What the fuck is going on here? I have constant right click issues. So you have the same issue but with the right click. That happens to me way too often for my liking, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know why though. Okay, connected. Um, I'm, 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 I'm connected, connected, connected. Um, uh, expected connected. Okay, so all connected routes. We're looking for black holes. No, we're not looking for black holes. We're looking for connected routes. So it'll be everything that is direct. So if we search for direct. And let's check. Just don't have issues. <laughs> oh, I've got no idea about HTML5, man. I know that it's ever like evolving, and you can do some pretty amazing things in HTML5. Like you got access to draw things on the fucking screen. You can draw like diagrams and graphs. You can play like videos in HTML5. You can do pretty, pretty much anything. Um, I find that pretty cool. I never knew it was renamed into the, into the living standard though. Um, hey there, do. Do Brownins, how's it going, mate? Thanks a lot for the follow, mate. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks, man. Why is Canvas the worst thing, man? I see. I just fucking right click there by mistake. What the fuck? God damn it! I was just saying I click by mistake everywhere, and there I just did a right click. Okay, so we've only got one connected route here. Is that even right? Why have we only got one connected route, chat? Do we have to worry about that? Where is this one? Main BGP table. Well, I mean, if we've only got one connected route... We probably have to verify what the fuck's going on with connected routes. I think we do only have one. We're only... Yes, that's the interface. So we're not creating an extra. So we do only have one. Okay, so, so, so that's fine. So internal connected. Let us go down over here. Everyone says we got 12 in this file. Why do we got 12 here? Well, that looks fine. Um, peer, prepend connected. But are we speaking about the same HTML5 canvas? Isn't that the canvas that you can just draw on? Why would that be related to tracking oh 
Oh, Canvas API. So there's obviously more areas of it, right? Than what I'm thinking of. Well, sure, because I don't think that IPv4 is going to be going away anytime soon, mate. There's just too many things on the internet that still use it and too many organizations that refuse to migrate. Like almost all of the all of the gaming servers or so are all are all IPv4. Unfortunately. Almost all of them. I think Minecraft is the only one that I've seen that can operate over over um, IPv6. Unless I'm wrong. But I'm pretty sure that that's the only one that I've seen. That's IPv6 is Minecraft. Okay, well that's correct. We should just have one root here, right? Yeah, cry. Yeah, I think that Oxygen means that there's more areas in the Canvas API than than only the th th than only the three D rendering and the, and the rendering and everything. Um, Chirk, I think that we, we we would actually be be bargaining on the very long term there, like ten years plus at least, mate. I don't think it's going to go anytime soon. From what I've seen in terms of ISPs and what they have, I mean, there are carriers these days that are fucking deploying V4 only. Why? Why the fuck would that be? This is fucking 2020 or 2021, mate. There are carriers with V4 only, with a networks that are doing 50 gigabit plus to active clients. V4 only, mate. Why? What the fuck? I don't understand that. Well, Oxgrid, that's pretty interesting, actually, mate. Um, Chirk, that's completely correct. We are creating a bird, right? And it is going to prove, it's going to definitely prove that birds don't exist. Completely agree with you, mate. It's exactly what we're doing. On the dot. You've nailed it. Um, that being said, I actually do have a government client. Um, that does use the first revision of this software on their on their layer 2 cloud service I think they got like two or three of our systems there That basically route traffic using bird I'm 20. As long as it happens before I turn 50, I'll be happy. If IPv4 is still standard at that point, I'll just go force everyone to switch to V6 by force. <laughs> there we go, mate. I'm personally a V8, man. Ah, <laughs> uh, God. I think that they found one thing out when they brought out IPv6 like 20 years ago, right? And that is it's not easy to get people to change. Not easy at all. People are stuck in their ways. They don't want to learn new things. You've got old people that are CEOs and CTOs and everything, and they don't understand the, the importance of it. They, they see that um, on the one hand, they got V4, it's working perfectly fine. And on the other hand, why do they have to spend more time and money on either new hardware or hours with their with the um, network engineers or their um, IT staff or so to upgrade they don't see a point in doing that I mean I specifically 
refer to the sort of attitude that one of my carrier clients has they they just purchased a whole bunch of very 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 expensive hardware and they deployed v4 only on it i said why not use v6 they said no why i said oh god jesus they just don't you can't use anything to explain to them that they need to start thinking about v6 there's there isn't anything you can say no matter what you say they say but how much will that be and you'll say well obviously you have to invest in um, hours or so to be able to reconfigure your network to be able to do v6 and everything it isn't that hard to do if you know what you're doing and then they say but they don't have in anyone on their side that knows what they're doing with v6 so now they have to send people on training and everything and why do they have to spend that money and shit like that and yet they'll drop a hundred grand on a piece of fucking software that they haven't even seen yet <laughs> and they will not even upgrade their 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 fucking network to v6 it just does not make any sense i just don't understand that at all i i i i am absolutely lost for words i don't know what they're thinking i don't know what they're thinking man our client our server connected it's check connected connected that's fine our server our server you mean internet explorer 6 and why people are still using it because dear jesus i've seen people that still have xp and they're supposed to be security experts and it's like i don't even say anything what can you say to that how can you still have an xp machine and think that you know anything at all about security uh, and what's worse i have one client that has an xp machine on the internet with a fucking public ip address and there i fucking right clicked again fine they don't call themselves it uh well they call themselves it experts they do not call themselves it security experts they do call themselves it experts If you got an XP machine on the internet with the public IP, you are fucked. You can quote me on that. Public IP on the, inter on the internet, you've been compromised already. Okay, transit, we got one, we got... Why is this direct route not being matched? Oh, it's not BGP table. That's fine. Okay, so that's that test sorted out. That should be good. Next. Transit. Where the fuck were we? What the fuck were we doing here? Prepend connected. We now going prepend default. Okay, prepend default routes. Prepend default. Right expected. Let's see what we get there. <clears throat> well, if you can't be bothered to find it, hopefully it's off. <laughs> Hopefully it's off then, mate, because if you got a fucking XP machine on the internet, there's probably no hope for you. You're just looking for trouble with that, mate. Um, let's go over here. Okay, let us chine and black those files. Let's just see if we've got any exceptions for them. that's a good thing you would not 
believe in terms of other hats that I wear, you would not believe how many um, reasons for security breaches I see per week where people have been compromised for having an XP system. It is not even funny. I mean, we aren't talking 5, 10, 20. We're talking in the fucking hundreds. It's like we ask people to provide the reason for a security breach on um, that has resulted in certain things happening to their IP ranges, generally them being dropped or blocked or rejected. And it's in the hundreds that people say they had a compromised PC. And then we generally follow up and ask like, okay, can you maybe describe what sort of system it is? XP, 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 XP. You may get a few like old Windows servers or so. Um, the other very common one would be a, would be a Mikrotech router that people do not keep up to date. Um, so XP Mikrotech, um, there was some sort of a bug or so in the Mikrotech routers as well pack where you could compromise them um, so that was l like something that we saw extremely often we don't see it that often now but it's close to being on the XP side um, and then it's sort of rare that we see someone with an up-to-date PC um, it's more common we see people that have clicked on emails and everything so clicking on email might be the first thing where people click on an attachment in an email or so or on a link and they click on things that pop up on their screens and sh uh, and shit like that. And then after that, it would be XP. XP on the internet browsing because obviously then you aren't keeping anything up to date at all and you, and you know absolutely nothing about security. But that is so often we see that it's not even it it isn't even funny. Yeah, probably should, mate. Probably should. I mean, I you say that the I think that my dentist as well their wi-fi access for all of their for all of their patients is also on the same server um is on the same network that their server is on so if you log on to the wi-fi and you use something like fing um fing is like a i don't know ping tracer tool on your phone you can see all the MAC addresses of their fucking server, their PCs, everything. I'm like, what the fuck are you trying to do, guys? But it isn't even worth explaining to them that they that they that they um that they need an IT specialist because there's no one there that even understands what security is and why that's a bad thing. They think, hey, we're going to provide wireless access to all of our clients. We buy a cheap little fucking wireless router we plug it in the in the network we provide a a a, um, a wpa2 okay so they use wpa2 at least they provide a wpa2 password that's the fucking practices name as the password that gives you access to the network that the server is on it how Trying to explain to someone like that that it's a bad idea is not even worth my time anymore. It's just not worth the effort. They need to get someone else who has time on their hands to somehow tell a dentist that this is a bad security choice that you've made there, mate. I don't know how you would even explain to someone like that. <laughs> That isn't my sort of strong point at all.
This reminds me of the time I pwned a McDonald's Wi-Fi by logging in as admin admin. I changed SSID to one of their competitors names. <laughs> Good job there, Oscar. Good job. <sighs> okay. Um, R1 facing E2, all default routes. R1 facing E2. One, two, three, four, five default routes, all being prepended. Okay, internal. Give me a second, let me just quickly check my messages here. Okay, <clears throat> where were we? Where were we? Um, 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 internal system, right? Um, default route, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I think the worst thing that I've ever done when I was young and when the internet was new, right? And when Google still returned results for certain things, is logging into printers on the internet with the default user credentials and printing out a thousand pages or so saying you need to fix your security mate that's probably the absolute worst thing i've ever done and that was a very long time ago Before countries had like fucking electronic communications laws and shit like that. Um, very, very long time ago. <laughs> um, PA we don't export default routes to. Root collector we don't export default routes to. Root server we don't export default routes to. Okay. Um, root reflector client. We do. Yeah. You actually can. I used um, Odin a few months ago with a paid subscription to scan some of our uh, um, to scan some of our own systems. I didn't find it very. I didn't find it to do what I was after it to do. Um, I was more after like a um, the same as what you receive with a PCI compliance scan where you can see the ports that are open, the things that are running on them and the recommendations that they have. But I can't find any company that I can pay to do single IP scans. And they're generally very fucking expensive. So at the end of the day, I resorted to using um, to using Nmap with um, what's those extra like scripts or so. That seems to be okay for my purposes. I was just after a fancy PDF where I could like scan a client's system and say, "Hey man, here's just a simple PDF showing that here's the." ports open on it from the internet um, it is pretty useless but here's what you can show your management or so because I mean almost all of the clients that we have would appreciate something like that even though it means absolutely nothing it would be a pretty attractive value add to add even though it means absolutely nothing at the end of the day. They would all be very happy to have something like that, but I was unable to find anything. Um, root reflector server. And then there's the um, open, what's that? Open, um, um, open, open something. It's not open NAS, it's open it's open VAS that you can do reports like that on, but it's a little bit of an issue to install and set up properly. Root reflect the server. We've got all of our default routes being 
prepended. Perfect. Open something 1.17 ARC1 installed. Are you serious? You can't be serious, mate. Yeah, I guess you guys could say I'm a pretty hardcore hacker, man. I once used McDonald's Wi-Fi without buying food. <laughs> Such a cool guy, I know. My ISP won't let us port forward through our routers page. We have to do it through their online plugin system. That's some bullshit. Um, it could be that they are either tracking what you port forwarding or they've got restrictions in place that you do not do something really fucking silly. Which I would understand that completely. I've seen clients fucking forward DNS from the internet to their fucking domain controller. It's like, why would you do that, mate? That's a pretty silly fucking thing to do. If I could prevent clients from doing that, I would love to do it. Because then they wonder why their internet link is completely maxed out. It's like, dude, you're being attacked and you're attacking people on the internet. Okay, so RL server, why did I not go on? We are looking for default routes, right? One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Root reflect the server to root reflect the server. One, two, three, four, five. That's perfect. And transit, we don't export default routes to so we got an exception even better okay next test kernel black hole uh that's not is it bgp prepend kernel black hole Right, expected. What on earth are those boxes? They bore cubes, mate. Bore cubes. Yeah, if they don't allow you to remove port forwarding, that's a problem. You should at least be in control of doing that. Borg, B-O-R-G, Borg cubes. You know, like Star Trek, isn't it? The Borg, half mechanical beings. Kernel black hole roots chat. Let's go. We don't advertise black hole roots to customers, so that's good. Internal. Um, can I just go down here? Oh wait, I should have actually started at the top and gone down to R2. This is kernel black hole, right? So if we select something like hmm. what can we use here? Maybe just that. So it's a, a round line 444. And that isn't the right table, right? Yes, R1 facing R2, we should have one. Hmm. We should probably instead search for our... Can we do it this way? Okay, so that's 100, 123 around line 440. 100, 123... We don't advertise it to Pierre. 
123 why do we have four here what is this one for r2 that's fine um root server around 9376 100 123 and the next one is our bgp table oh it's r2's inbound so that's fine um next one is root reflector client um 44 plus minus 440 that's good um this is in the right table yep We've only got two of them, which is correct. One for v4 and probably one for v6, which is right. Next is root reflect server. Uh, one four four zero and the second one is v6, that is correct. And root reflect server, root reflect server. Two entries, one for v4, one for v6, that is correct. And transit, we do advertise black hole routes. We got 1, 100, 123, that's correct. And 100, 123, and V6, we got V6 as well. Okay, so that's that one sorted out. Next is going to be... Which one was this? Kernel Black Hole. Uh, next is Kernel Default. Chat, we're up to 1.2 million lines of test output. We're almost there, man. I don't know how, I don't know what we were at like two months ago, but we still have a, a absolute, a monster of a test to do. We still have our large community functions, which is probably about three or 400,000 lines. So we actually closing on probably 2 million now. Jesus. If we change something and something breaks, we're going to know about it, aren't we? We're going to fucking know about it. Um. <clears throat> Hang on. Oxgray, you said you can't wait for Starlink to reach the globe. Aren't you just going to be profiled? You know, you browse YouTube and I don't know, you find something based on where you are because now they know where, where exactly you are or something. I'm not quite sure my mom is actually watching at the moment. There is a possibility she is. But generally, if she has a computer problem, I'd recommend that she probably takes it into a shop to a sister probably the best thing but if she's watching she might scream at me but it's a true story mate it's a true story I don't really want to be involved in computer issue problems I get in I get enough of those during the day and during the evening Prepend kernel default. That's what we just did, right? Or are we doing the next test now? I can't fucking remember. Yes, it's prepend kernel default. Um, prepend kernel default. Um, that's the default route. We got two of them, so that's correct. Um, internal prepend kernel default. We got two of them. Ah, wait a minute. Oh, that's black hole. I was about to say that was wrong. Got two of them, that's correct. Uh, we don't export default to peers. Um, so R2 is, has not got, well, there's no R1 there. We've then got peer type root collector. We don't export defaults to that. So that's going to have no data for R1. We've got peer type root server. We don't export defaults to that. We don't export default to, hang on a second, hang on a second. Why is that file blank? That sounds like, that smells like an exception. Let 
<laughs> being tracked by telecom operators or being tracked by Mr. Mr. Musk. It's a good way to put it, mate. Root server and transit. Root server is raising an exception. The fuck? Uh, okay, if root server is raising an exception, that's kernel default. Um, BGP, it's not BGP, it'll just be kernel default, right? And we can then copy that to transit. Transit, 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 transit. Uh, kernel default. Uh, where are you going, mate? And that'll be transit. Okay, um, I don't know what's going to happen now if we do, if we run this. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Jerkers, what the fuck, mate? <laughs> what the fuck does that even mean, mate? <laughs> I know he loves me. Oh my god, Colonel Default, we need to delete those results first. Why is there no matches though? That's weird. Expected BGP prepend. Oh, fuck. Because I can't swap properly. <laughs> person being used to strangle the other person lol oh god that's a good one man and the caption was me versus the guy ruining my code <laughs> well I should probably be that guy then that strangles myself I tell you it's just crazy man I'm always changing shit and fixing things Oh, hectic. Internet over radio. That's pretty crazy, man. Okay. Um, where were we even? Um, two failed. It was... I can't remember now. Can't remember which tests failed. <laughs> it started Pia. Um, I'm sh pretty sure we did that. Kernel default, blank. Um, root collector, we don't export defaults to, so R1 is gone. Root server, we don't export defaults to. R1 is gone. Um, RR client, we don't export defaults to. Wait, RR client, we do. On our client video, we've got two entries. It is a default root. It is a kernel root, and the other one's for v6, which is this one over here, which is correct. Our server kernel default. Um, that is correct. And for IPv6, that is correct. And our server, our server. We've got Oh that, That's correct and for v6 that's correct and Transit we don't export defaults to which means 
We don't have R1, which is correct. Next test chat. Oh my god, this has been a fucking disaster, I tell you. We're nearly there. We've got one, two, three, four, five left. So we're three quarters the way. Three quarters the way in eight hours, which means we've got two hours left. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. We must make good speed here. <laughs> Colonel default. Oh shit, there's one, two, three, four, five. Ah, oh, fuck me, there's six left. Fuck. Alright, expected. Oh god. Redeemed highlight messes. So many points, nothing to lose them on. You could play the slot machine, or... Okay, don't play the slot machine. Roulette is more fun. Roulette... 1000 Man today is a good day mate. I fucking won some points You always have to go all in Jesus mate, what the fuck why you do stuff like that? <laughs> high risk high reward, right? I use points on the emote. Oh my god, guys, don't waste all your meme coins, man. Those meme coins are useful for nothing at all. Um. Okay, let's see. What test was that? Prepend kernel. So all kernel roots should be prepended now. Um, Prepend kernel. We got fucking 22 results. Uh, okay, I mean, if that's going to be the case, this is going to be a little bit more difficult to verify. One, two, well, we can actually e easily see because the kernel will be in grey and the other one will be fucking orange. So that one is fine. Um, internal. Uh, that is also... Hang on a second. Hang on one second. That is also catching black hole, which is actually correct. So it's catching default black holes and normal roots. Oh no. Well, Oxcre, I told you not to do it, mate. God damn it. Yeah, the slot machine is, I don't know why that, I mean, it used to be on like a fucking 60% win rate or so. And I changed it to a 95% win rate. It should give more coins or it should give more results more often. It's pretty rare it does anything like that. Peer. Normal route, 120, 121, wait, 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 121, 122, those are the only two kernel routes we have, it is, okay, um, that's fine, um, route collector, prepend kernel, prepend kernel, prepend kernel, Let's check if that is the only kernel roots we have. We've got one, two, three. Uh, okay, that's fine. It's the only ones being prepended, yeah. Okay. Root server. Prepend kernel. We've got a lot here. We've got. Let's just check that if we have anything that matches kernel that we've got the prepending being done. Yep, that's fine. Let's just do one IPv6 one and see. Um, one IPv6 one. Hello, IPv6. On one facing. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake, where is the IPv6 router here? Here we go. One, two, three. Perfect. Okay, 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 okay. All, th all of them are kernel roots. Perfect. Root reflector client. Um, 
we should have all of our kernel roots here as well. Yep. All prepended. Root reflector server. Um, kernel roots. All of them are prepended. Perfect. Root reflector server to root reflector server. Oh my god. Oh no. Need to add minus. Yeah, you need to add minus F to that, mate. <laughs> um, R1, R2. Kernel roots, right? Kernel roots being prepended. Yes, they are. Well, that's a good thing. Um, next, we've got transit. Kernel roots being prepended, mate. Maybe, 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 maybe. One, two, three. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, that's that one done. Chat, I'm going to need one more cup of coffee. We are down to over here, so we have got one, two, three, four, five left. Fuck, we only three quarters of the way now. I'm sure we'll finish this in the next hour. I am, I am confident we can do this. Um, let me just set this to. I don't know if I should run all of them. If I run all of them, I'm going to get confused with where we are. So I think we just do one at a time as we're doing at the moment. It seems to be sort of working out fine. Let's just make sure we don't have any in inconsistent values here. So the next one's going to be originated. <laughs> you do know you only have to remove the di the directory inode, so you can literally remove forward slash without having to delete every single file on the system. You just need to know where forward slash is in the inode table. You just have to drop it. Bam, every single file is fucking gone in an instant. Well, it'll be almost an instant because you've got the inode cache, right? But that'll be some really fucked up results that you're going to be receiving. Kernel, um, this is originated default, right, expected data. Okay, I'm just going to quickly grab a cup of coffee chat. I will be right back. Just give me a few moments.
Okay, chat, wait, 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 Jesus, we have to get this done, man, we have to, we fucking have to, we're probably not going to be able to split them, but we're going to have to get this sorted like right now, let's do this, full speed, full fucking speed, mate, PC, go faster, Jesus Christ, okay, let's go, I set up way too late again, good morning, everyone, good morning there, jerkers, Good morning, mate. And thanks a lot for the follow, man. It's completely and utterly greatly appreciated. I can't tell you how much I appreciate the follows, man. Um, root server, prepend. Uh, let's do fucking um, root collector first. Root collector, prepend, originator default. Root collector, where are you, mate? Prepend, originator default. Fuck me. Let's copy the kernel one. Originated, prepend, originate. Ah, for fuck's sake. Whatever. Originated default. Uh, Brute collector. Great stuff. Linux 6 coming soon. Nice try. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God, Jokers. Jesus Christ. Root collector, root server. I'm pretty sure almost all of us in here are on Linux at the moment. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm wrong. Chat, what operating system is you use? Um, originated default. We can copy kernel default. Did we just do this one? Root server, originated default. Paste. Originated default. Um, next is RR client. Um, copy. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake, I keep going to the wrong fucking one. RR. Ah, oh, man, that's the wrong one. Um, I'm, 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 peer. I've made a fuck up. I should have done peer first. Kernel default. Copy. To originate a default. Originate a default. I want these tests to pass before I have to go, man. I have to go in about an hour or so. Um, originate a default. Originate a default. Um, that's peer. We done root server, root collector, transit's next. Transit. Transit, 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 transit. Kernel default. Copy. To originated default. Uh, originated default. Okay. Um, delete everything. Originated default. Uh oh. Oh no, it's fine. Originated default. Write everything out. Right, expected. Let's see what happens. Pog me too. Yeah, I unfortunately have to be up like fucking early tomorrow to do a um, configuration change in a client system. And then I've got the cleaners that come into the office. Uh, I can't really. Have clients that need stuff, man. 
an email that just came in of something I have to do in about an hour. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so I've got some um, client configurations that I have to change tomorrow morning. Um, and then the clean is coming after that. So I'm going to try do other things that I'm supposed to be doing. And then after that, um, I'll stream from the usual time of like 0800 UTC or maybe a little bit earlier, depending if I can get everything done by then. Um, originated default. So if we rerun this without right expected, we should not get failures now. Um, hey there, Bone Keys One. How's it going, mate? Thanks a lot for the follow, man. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks, man. Got to fly through these test chat. We got to fly through them. Originated defaults is next. Should be pretty easy to do, right? Yes, maybe sometimes. Customer originated default. Oh shit, that's the wrong one. If I only click the right one, it would be absolutely great. Okay. Um, we're looking for prepended routes. That is an originated default route is being prepended. There's only two, so it's for V4 and for V6, which is correct. That's fine. Um, internal originated default routes. Um, two. It's a default route. There's only two of them, so that's fine. Peer uh, originate default. We don't export to peer, so we don't have anything for R1. Root collector, we don't export default routes. We don't have R1. Root server, we don't export default routes. We don't have R1. That's fine. RR client, we do export default routes. We should have two as well v4 and v6 um root reflect the server originated default routes we've got two that is a default route and that's the ipv6 one perfect next is our server our server we've got originated default two again um that's one and that is two that's perfect um transit I'm just wondering, okay, so it's the reason why it's only two on all of these and not like 28 as we saw earlier on some of them is because R2 isn't set to actually accept them, um, which is fine. We're just testing out the, ad, the advertising of it. Um, hey there, John Smith, uh, Gazillion Nines, how's it going, mate? so many ads yeah i don't know why man that's twitch for you probably um transit is there a way to disable the ads by the way i will check that this evening if there is i'll disable them i don't fucking need ads we don't need ads mate Fuck them ads, we don't need advertising here. Um, so that's originated default sorted out. The next one is all originated routes. So originated, um, right, expected data route. Let's see what happens here. We got three more after this one. Oh fuck, there's four more. Oh man. Oh man. It's not good. Hey there, Luke64383. How's it going, mate? What are you up to today, man? Let's do uh, China in the Black. Get that shit sorted. Let's rerun this to see if there's any exceptions being raised during configuration and setup. There shouldn't be. We can probably just start testing out here, actually. Originated, where's the originated routes coming from? Originated, perfect, okay. Um, so it's all originated routes then, right? So it's the default originated route. It's the normal, hang on a second. Yeah, that's originated, that's originated. So it's one, two, three. Four. It's four of them, and then 
Why is there five of them? Oh, that's being perceived. So, so there's four of them, right? So if we go to V6, we should see the same thing. Um, R1 facing R2, which is probably this one over here. Um, one, two, three, four. Hang on a second. Why is it five here? Did I just say four? Did I say five? One, two. Oh, that's on the other side. That's R1 facing R2. Okay, so I think there's four of them. Um, doesn't really matter as long as all the originated routes have got prepending on them, it's fine. So there's four here as well. One, two, three, four. And that is going to be V6. One, two, three, four. That's fine. Thanks a lot for the follow there, John Smith Gazillion Nines. It's really appreciated, mate. Thanks, man. Um, expected originated. One, two, three, four. That's to peer. So we can't originate. Wait a minute. There's a lot more. Fuck, that's R2 to R1 again. I'm getting fucking confused here. Hang on a second. Let's go right back up to the top and check this. One, two, three. There should be three of them because we don't export a default route to appear. So that, that is fine. We don't expect export a default route to a route collector either. So there should also be three here. So that's one, two, three, and none more after that. Perfect. Um, and that is all of the originated routes, right? These are static. That's kernel, that's kernel, that's kernel, that's originated, originated, originated and direct. So that is correct. Um, root server, um, originated routes, one, two, three, and nothing after it. That's perfect. That's what we're looking for. And root reflector client, this should be all of them, so probably like four, right? Default one, two, three, four, and nothing after it. Perfect, that's that one sorted out. Our server, root reflector server, right? That should also be four, one, two, three, four, and nothing after it. That is perfect. Well, we know there isn't anything after it because that number of there is eight so it's 4v4 and 4v6 so you probably don't even have to check that this is also eight so it's one two three four and then obviously v6 is the other four and transit is going to be three because we don't export default routes to transit providers so it is going to be this one over here one two three and nothing after it Perfect. Okay, we need to move on to the next test now. Um, we need to get these sorted out. Um, next one, next one, next one is going to be... Um, originated is what we just did. It'll be a static black hole. Prepend static black hole. Uh, right expected data. Right. Wow, someone with a PhD on here, big chance from the typical blue collar birds. What's a blue collar bird, mate? I don't quite understand that. I'm a little bit slow though. <laughs> Forgive me, mate. Yeah, man, I thought maybe someone would find this interesting, you know? And it helps me keep focused as well, where I don't switch between my email every three seconds. It's now every three minutes. <laughs> it's a more productive for me. Okay, let's do a China and black on everything over here. Yeah, let's get that sorted out. China and black. Okay, and if we rerun this test, we shouldn't get any... Ex well, we're probably going to receive exceptions, right? We can't be that lucky. Or are we? I don't see exceptions. Okay, perfect. So that means we can just go straight to verifying this now. So, peer type customer. Um, expect static black holes. We don't export black holes to clients, so R1's got no data. 
internal systems we do export black holes so we should probably have one and one it's one v4 one v6 that's fine um peers we don't export black holes to peers so we shouldn't have anything for r1 which we don't um root collector uh, we do export black holes to root collectors so we should have one why have we got two here because that's r2 facing r1 so we actually have one 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 and one so that's fine um root server will be the same we'll have four but it's actually two so that's one and one and v6 and v6 that's perfect and root reflector client um, that should be one and two that's perfect root reflector server will be one and two that's perfect root reflector server to root reflector server should be one and two that's perfect and then transit we do export black holes to transit so that would be two and two or one 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 and one 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 and one that's perfect okay next test next test i want to see this entire set passing um we're definitely not going to have enough time to split these up though but we definitely need this to pass um this is going to be static black hole so the next one is static default okay static default right expected um birds which talk and chirp mate but no substance just having some fun with twitches okay i'm australian sync mate is cool from a south african okay i don't think very many people here use mates but i've had quite a few australian friends so it kind of is something that's stuck you know mate okay let us um check if we've got any exceptions i'm pretty sure we will have exceptions here we'll have like um probably like peer grid collector grid server and transit are all going to throw fucking exceptions at us and like i said there's all of them throwing exceptions at us let's check peer um that is for static default so if we go to kernel default and we just copy the exception out of this one and we add the exception to static default over here uh why have why has static default got static black hole in it that's weird anyway you can change that to static default copy and pasta man copy and pasta um root collector we also need to change static default ah that doesn't even have static default in it well that's even worse that's even worse let us copy kernel default and paste it in static default uh, did i just change the correct file here i did okay great stuff great stuff static default static default um root server we don't export default roots to so that should have an exception as well so let's copy kernel default to static default over here and that's going to be static default and then rr client um, that's not going to be a problem the next one that we need to fix then is transit so transit transit where are you fucking transit um you're over here static default um we need to copy kernel default exception into static default over here and rename this to static default and let's delete all of our output data so let's go over here and this is going to be delete static default and we rerun this test to write expected data out and then we can verify that it's all okay um we use mate as an endearing thing as well when you want to say hello okay yeah you don't notice it when you use it <laughs> That seems to be the case with me, man. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So the next thing we need to do then is do a chart in the back. Let's format all of those files all nicely. And then let's check if we got any exceptions. Hopefully it'll now be good. God, this is just way too 
many files so we will be splitting these up into separate test sets um, this is just way too many to try and keep track of um, so that was that static default right um, that'll be similar to the originator default which set we just checked prepending for um, this is going to be static default over here right and we've got four so static default will only be the default roots then so that's one um, that's R2 facing R1 that's the V6 one so it'll be four so four in customer we do send static def um, static default roots to internal systems so this will be two one two that's fine that is a default root right yes it is perfect and then we got peer we don't send default root roots to peers so we won't have any output for r1 um, root collectors we don't send default roots to root collectors so we don't have anything for r1 root server we don't send static well we don't send default roots to root servers at all so r1's not got any data there either root reflector client we do send static or we do send default roots to so we should have two here which we do perfect and root reflector server we should have two as well perfect that's correct and root reflector server to root reflector server we've got one two that's perfect and transit we don't send default routes to so we shouldn't have anything for one excellent next set of tests is going to be static so just plain static Right, expect to data. Let's check what that looks like. Hello, inmate. <laughs> oh God, ox gray Jesus. You just had to, mate. You just had to. Inmate. Okay, chat. Static roots, mate. Let's see. Oh, my dear Jesus, look at all that output. Okay, um, let's do a chan and a black on that. Let's check if there's anything failing. There shouldn't be. That sets the defaults. We're not trying to override anything we shouldn't be overriding. So we should just get hopefully just green all across the board. Perfect, perfect, perfect. That's what we're after. Um, customer static root prepending. 24 sounds about right we've got default roots being prepended we've got normal roots being prepended we've got device roots being prepended we've got gateway roots being prepended so it's one two it's three here right one two three of them and for v6 it should also be three uh v6 where's v6 gone yeah one two three and there's no other static roots here that's kernel originated bgp bgp for fuck's sake bgp 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 static kernel originated bgp bgp perfect so that's correct um internal systems internal peering session we should have four here right i think one two three four perfect 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 um it's because we don't advertise black holes to customers but we do have a static black hole route this is 20 why is this 20 that's weird that is for a peer okay we don't export um default routes or black holes to peers so you should probably just have like two perfect we have two perfect 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 um this is root collector root collector should be the same why have we got two here then that was peer root collector isn't the same because we also export black holes to root collectors so we got one two three then and the third one is our slash 24 black hole which is this one over here so there's three and there isn't anything after it which is perfect and three times four is 12 that's correct so peer type root server we've got prepend static 
we've got one, two, three. It'll be the same and nothing after it. That's perfect. And root reflector client. We will have one, um, two plus two plus two plus two. That's eight. That's perfect. So we've got one over here. Oh, we've actually got four. I suppose that's fine. We've got the default root. We've got the normal root. We got gateway. We've got device. Um, normal root, gateway, device, and default. What the fuck? Default. This is going to a root reflector client. Default. Black hole. gateway device and device root okay perfect um root reflector server um same thing eight results one two three four and four again which is perfect that's what we're looking for and root reflector server to reflect the server same thing eight one two three four and four four v six yep one we two three four that's perfect and transit um it's probably going to be very few for this one transit we have got 24 we've got um just make sure that all of those are statics um direct originate 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 kernel 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 static 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 um, BGP, 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 perfect. It is sorted out. And let's just verify V6 on this one just to be 100% sure. And then we sort it with this. R1 to R2 for V6. We have got, just make sure that it's a static roots. Um, BGP, 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 um, originated, originated. Kernel, 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 static, 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 perfect. All you youngins using mate as a slang, I'll say it how you're supposed to say it. <laughs> Inmate. What research do you do? Uh, I don't know, mate, anything that interests me, really. Not really research in that sense where I fucking uh go out to write a paper or something i don't have time for that shit man don't have time for that shit research into how, how to do certain things sure man right default mm -mm. why don't i put the right default there it's it's right expected chat last set um last test in the set and then we can rerun this for all of them and see how many we have and then tomorrow we'll see if we can split them up a bit um let's see how far we get here grepper extension for what mate vs code what does the grepper extension do interested in Patents. Nope, not at all, mate. I'm anti patent. I don't believe how to do things should be restricted. Um, let us see. Um, let's rerun prepend. Hopefully, we're not going to get any setup failures. Cheers, Oxgray. Have a good one, mate. I hope you get your sleep this evening. Int is not iterable. What the flying fuck stick does that even mean? What the fuck? Int is not iterable? The fuck? Now, chat. That is something I don't want to see on the last test after eight hours and 56 minutes is an error like that ah what does that even mean and where the fuck does that even come from 
Where is that fucking prepend file gone? Customer. Definitely something I don't want to see. Huh. <laughs> Look at this. Peer type customer test BGP prepend. Do you see any code in here? No. Argument of type int is not iterable. Okay, well, we have to track that fucker down then, don't we? That comes from template, I think. Which is where I just fucking was. Template prepend is probably down here. Do you see an iteration happening here? Nope. It's probably in template base then. Why would we be iterating over fucking... What does this even mean? Oh, here's the code over here. Oh, shit. That's not good. That comes from a completely different fucking place. Oh, fuck. Well, this is going to be a problem. This is going to be a big problem. Oh, shit. But hang on, that, that should be in the if statement. That's why it's a problem. We can just move all of this fucking shit over here. We can delete. It just goes to show that we are triggering a lot of different fucking pieces of code here. And after so many tests, we got one that has a problem. Okay, so that is in a if is um, if is instance for dict. So we're not going to be doing that again on an integer. <laughs> it's probably not such a hot idea. And that just sets everything. Okay, we just use the option variable here because writing that out for every fucking line is just way too long. So we're setting the configuration for each of our types of prepending. Um, let us then rerun that, right? We probably have to delete all the results though. Uh, where's our RM line gone? Prepend. It's just test BGP or expect BGP prepend, right? Uh, yes, that's all that we need to delete. See what happens this time. Okay. It sounds pretty awesome there. Talk to her day. Let us do a chown and a black. Let us rerun that test again. Let us make sure we don't have any exceptions. One hundred and fifty-three passed. Perfect. Okay. Um. So we are testing now, prepending, fucking everything. Right. This is literally going to prepend even your mom. Uh. Okay. So if we search for this, hundred and twenty-seven <laughs> matches. Okay. Well. Um. Every single root. Why isn't this one prepended connected? That's not good. That's a bug. Fifty. 
fixed. Let's delete everything, rerun the test, see if it's now okay. Well, we find one more bug chat. And Oscar always asks me, how many bugs do I actually find? Well, a couple. A couple a day. <laughs> Okay, let's try and black that shit. And then let's um, rerun this to make sure results are consistent. We don't have any setup failures. Okay, and then let's check that again. 132 now. So pretty much everything here should be prepended. Which it is, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's just quickly check V6. Uh, Two, three, four, five, six. John Smith. Not quite sure that's the best idea in this climate, mate. There's them COVID 19s running around here. Well, I suppose everywhere, right? One, two. Oh, shit. Why is this all fucked up? Oh, 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 oh. This is bad. Oh no, that's fine. But this is bad. Why is originated roots not being prepended? Oh, oh. What the fuck? What the fuck is going on here? It's being s oh wait, it is being set. How can this one test out of everything be failing? I don't get it. These are all fine, with originated. You see that. Why on earth would we then have our internal system with an originated root that's not being prepended? How is that how is that remotely possible? No man, there's something very wrong here. Static kernel is not being prepended. Originator is not being prepended. Chat, this is something we do not want, want, want to see. This is something we definitely do not want to see. A vaccine soon sure mate I don't think that's gonna be anytime soon okay we've got a we've got a we've got a disaster here <laughs> we've got a motherfucking disaster mate oh my god how can this one thing fail this is a kind of like four hour issue we would down encounter where one test like that fails, at the end, the very end, the last test that we have fails, even though we test everything individually out, 
we then test everything together and bang bang everything goes to hell in a hand basket but the thing is the one peer type is fine customer is fine how can customer be fine? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 roots are perfectly fine in customer. But internal, on the other hand, R1 facing R2, I do not understand this this is default originate this is or originated default this is kernel default this is static default this is connected connected no connected originated it's almost as if those options aren't even being set But we copied and pasted them. What am I doing wrong here? Peer config prepend. That's correct. Peer config prepend. It's a single list. Oh, it's a list. It's a list. Is it because it's a list that this, that this is a problem? Oh, fuck, you know something. It isn't a list. It's just a plain value. Hang on a second. It's just a value. So it isn't even anything special. Oh, my Jesus. Well, my entire world comes to an end. I thought I'd get this finished today. There's no fucking way we can do that. So we've literally got a default route. The BGP one is being allowed. The originated one isn't. Which makes... Hang on a second. Is there maybe something else that's the problem here? Nope. Template base, template base, template base. They're all pretty much the same. Nothing special. And using template prepend. Dot dot template prepend BGP. Why is that prepend BGP? <gasps> Chat, I found the problem. I found it. I found it. It's using the wrong template. It's using the wrong motherfucking template, man. That would create that problem. We might be saved. We might be saved. Um, prepend BGP import to prepend import in star slash test underscore BGP underscore prepend dot pi. Okay, we might be saved, chat. Let's check. John Smith, I think you are terribly optimistic, mate. But who knows, man? Who knows? I still think you're terribly optimistic, though. I'd say earliest. Earliest end of this year, end of next year. Before you can actually maybe buy something across the counter or with a nurse or a fucking sister or so in one of those little rooms at the pharmacies. I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. I would gladly pay, I don't know, a grand or two grand to have an, to, to have an inoculation. 
but I think there's quite a bit of red tape around medical aids and people just buying up all the all the stock and everything. Maybe I'm wrong, man. I hope I'm wrong. Okay, let's check this again. No more fail. Well, it was not actually failures there anyway, but. Oh, wait a minute. This is supposed to be. Is this supposed to be BGP prepend? No, we've got BGP prepend, BGP, and we've got BGP prepend, which is prepend fucking everything. So, if we check over here, everything is prepended. Yep, that is amazing. And internal system, everything prepended. Yep. That is amazing. I can't even remember what the problem was here. Oh, the wrong, the wrong template. Here, everything should be prepended. Yep, that is good. Let's just check V6 out for peer just to make 100% sure. V6 is still fine. V6, everything prepended. Yep, that's perfect. Um, root collector prepended. Are we prepended, mate? Prepended. Fuck, I keep fucking right clicking. Yep, all sorted. Root server. Is everything prepended? Yeah. Yep, perfect. Um, our client, is everything prepended? Yep, so far. Yep, 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 maybe, yep, maybe, maybe a big yep. Yep, yep, perfect. Oh, I see what you mean. You speaking about Australia, mate. Sorry about that, man. I forgot you were from Australia. You might be looking at mid this year. We definitely not looking at mid this year. Our government is pretty fucking slow as shit, mate. They need to get the ass into gear and stop with all the corruption. Corrupting everything. Jesus. Okay, transit. Let's see over here. Um, all sorted out. Excellent. That is our test set um, passing. Let us quickly... Oh god, we have to update the readme file, don't we? Oh man, that's gonna... That we're gonna have to do tomorrow. We're not gonna get around to that now. That's gonna take more than the time I have left. Okay, um, fix prepending readme file. In the meantime, we can probably commit everything. Git data start, it's a lot of changes. Git add dot. Um, what else did we change? I think we changed quite a bit of things over here. Good plan, git add patch dot. Um, yes, we added those options. Yes, we added bird functions. Yes, we sorted. Uh, that needs to be split. Yes, 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 we're not committing that yet. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 I hope I pressed yes there, okay, yes, okay, yes, okay, cool, yes, 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 BGP and default are now virtual options. Okay, what else do we still have? Just to fix me. Perfect. Okay, um, docs, get status dot, get add patch dot. Oops. Um, don't need that fix me. We're not going to do that yet. This is part of the prepending. 
Perfect. What else did we have? Ref for deleted. Okay, that should be that should be good. Let's commit that. Um tests BGP reworked. Um AS path pre-pending tests. Okay, now um, what we pretty much want to do is run that entire set. I'm hoping it's going to pass. And then tomorrow morning, probably the first thing we need to do is rerun everything up until T80, including T80, and make sure that everything is still passing. So this single set of tests, oh my God, that's like over 200,000 lines. Hmm. It's insane. You'll see now how many there are. But we went from this morning there being 700 and like 10,000 lines of test data to this afternoon there being 1.4 million lines. So we've like doubled. This was probably one of the biggest sets we've got. Sure. Um need to be off shortly but I want to see if these pass man it'll make me feel a lot better give me a second chat It should hopefully start soon. The amount of time this is taking indicates, I think there's like, there's 150 odd times like 21. There's like only 3000 tests or so, but PyTest generally takes its time with XDist installed and being used. sort out some emails while that is happening come on tests man I just want to see green I just want to see green man then again there's always a possibility we've broken something <laughs> while we are fixing things we broke something else Oh, it's 4,000 tests. 4,507. Let's see what happens.
Okay, let's see. I haven't seen failures, have you, chat? Nope, no failures yet. I mean, we might be able to remove some test data here. We don't need all of the routing tables, do we? I don't think we need the master tables. We don't need the kernel table. We don't need the rib. We should just be able to delete this, I think. I think we can just delete this. That should cut like a couple hundred thousand lines. Um, or maybe we should just keep it anyway. Hmm, I think we just keep it anyway. There's no harm in keeping it. It's just a couple more lines of test data we have. Eighty percent you mean code coverage there, CryoGI? I don't think any sort of code coverage if you are referring to code coverage, I don't think there's any sort of meaning to the code coverage at the moment. We would have to pass all of them first. And then we do the entire fucking 50 to 60,000 of them and then we'll actually have a d decent code c coverage then oh percentage test passed yeah i think we've clocked this now i think we got prepending sorted out we're at t80 at the moment we just did t80 so tomorrow oh pilot i mean that's fine that is an action error so that is 4461 pass that is what i'm after we pass we just need to run um probably something like format document on this or something oh wait implicit string concatenation found in list oh wait uh that's because we need to do that uh, pylon should be fine now. Are there any other errors in this file? Um, let's just close everything. Uh, close saved. And let's open that again. Uh, base. And just fix this one. Pylon should be happy now. Let us quickly go um, get add patch dot fix that fix oh there's only one of them what the fuck I just fixed two lines why is it only saying that there's one that's changed that's weird hmm Let's just call this a git stash rebase fix up git stash pop. Okay. Hi there, I'm new to Python. What are you using for testing? PyTest, mate. And to do assertions? Um, assert. So PyTest and just assert. Um, the assertions are actually coming from this class here. Um, we've got assertions somewhere here. Assertions like that over there. So PyTest plus asserts. And where do you store tests? Can you show in detail? Um, my tests are organized in classes. Um, so I've got a t 
test directory. Um, it might be better I can take you through that tomorrow. Um, I actually have to be leaving at the moment. But tomorrow if you want, um, anytime from like when I get online or so, um, I don't mind showing you. I've got a test directory over here, um, which has just got an init in every single directory that I have because um, can't make them non-class based or package or module based because of conflicts with the names so I'm basically I've got some customizations to conftest.py I've got a base test class that everything every single test inherits from that knows how to set the test scenario up and do the network simulation and it's got a whole bunch of attributes to configure the net to configure the network simulation it sets up all the bird routers xbgp instances switches the network connectivity and everything and then in the test themselves i have got um i have got a template that i use to share between all the varying configuration types um, and here's where the tests are basically done for the various routing tables um, and then that is inherited from the test itself which flips configuration on off or adds it or removes it or so um, and then what I've done is you can tell Py or I've written a customization where you can tell PyTest or you can tell the test framework to write out what the results are that it would be expecting, which are these over here, which we then verify if they're correct or not. So the first time you run a test writing out the file, it'll fail. The second time you run it, if there isn't any setup exceptions, um, it should pass and then we verify that all the data is correct and we commit it and then if it's run after that it'll pass if all of these are still the same so we're writing out a python file just because we can use black on it um, to format it all nicely instead of writing out something like yaml or so that's fucking all over the place and we would have to try and format it ourselves so we write out a python file this pub python file is basically loaded into the test system when it runs a test with the same name so we just change the test over here with the expected we can then pull out all of the um all of the dictionary names that we need um when we pull out all the dictionary names that that we need we can then compare the dictionaries with the dictionaries that we receive um hey there Tim Bao, is it Bao Baudo or Baudet? Um, thanks a lot for the for the raid, mate. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks, man. I'm terribly sorry, guys. Um, I actually have to be leaving at the moment. I'm sorry you've caught me at this time. Um, also stream with the bird. Um, bird is the bird internet routing demon. It's a BGP OSPF rip babble um, demon um well demon in the <laughs> that sounds a bit odd but it's a process that runs on a on a unix based operating system that exchanges routing information um between um between isps or internet exchange um me uh, members no it isn't an animal mate um there's more inform information over here though um project um for something to check after your stream your mic is clipping quite a lot it is that's pretty weird maybe i'm just speaking too loud i'll definitely check that out mate thanks it might just be my speech as well hey i don't speak fluently it's probably what you're hearing though huh. okay um chat i'm gonna raid someone else with everyone um 
the audio is distorting okay i'll definitely check that out mate thanks but i unfortunately i need to be off now I have a good day mate perfect man um who what was it asked me about the test framework um dpq pkq um if you come back tomorrow mate um say about after 0800 utc i should be online i'll then take you through how the test framework actually works i don't mind doing that it's quite involved though but um clone uk unfortunately mate i've been here for like nine and a half hours now and i've got client configurations i have to do tomorrow morning I need a little bit of a break, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, terribly sorry about that, guys. Uh, let us find somebody to raid. Give me a moment. Um, give me a moment. Who is a good victim here? Hmm. Assembly for virtual machines in C. Can we raid this chap? Wait a minute, let's try and find someone. Making an MMO from scratch. Hmm. Hmm. Who is going to be a good victim? Let's try something. Well, making an MMO from scratch, mate. It looks interesting. Let's do it. Cheers, mate. 